Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. Hello and welcome into Lawrence High School as we get ready for the first week of the high school playoffs here on KLWN. With Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson, and Lawrence High comes into this one at 6-2 and two on the season. They've sprinted to the finish line here, earning a home game in the first round of the playoffs. Their opponent today is the Dodge City High School Demons, who come in at 3-5 and five on the air, 0-4 oh out of the Western Athletic Conference. LHS, all eight of their games coming in the Sunflower League. So, Matt, last week, Lawrence victorious 56-3 to, three to uh, I guess, kind of complement their previous win over Lawrence Free State 31 to 24. Thoughts on the Lions now as we uh, come closer to the season and how they're playing right now? Well, the biggest deal is that Banks Bone has grown up. I mean, he has grown up before our eyes. He has really turned into an outstanding quarterback. And there was never ever any question about his running ability and how and his football smarts. Uh, it was it was really kind of in the early part of the year. It's all about his arm and whether or not and and connecting with his receivers and making sure that. If his receivers didn't run the route, right routes, could they? Could he get it to them anyway? Uh, and and it just it has kind of all evolved into just what we've seen. It's just a great, great maturation of that of that young man, and he's had just an outstanding couple of games against Free State. His the the, the, the Malcolm Paul catch was just unreal. Uh, uh, that was the 60 yard. Uh, 60 yarder to take send it into overtime and then his strike to Mason Mosman in the back of the end zone was just perfect to get the go ahead touchdown in overtime and he's just he, he's able to read defenses he knows where to he knows how to run and where the how to wait for the run I mean he's it's a, all packages of the game is being a quarterback he's got he's got it dialed in well, today's broadcast is brought to you by 23rd Street Brewery. You can uh, check out the KU football game tomorrow over at the brewery, bright and early. Got any specials going on in the morning? Uh, you know what? Uh, it, every day is special. At every day is Street special Street. at 23rd Street Brewery. That's uh, a good way. <laughs> you can always get breakfast items anytime you want. Just kind of have to ask. Breakfast pizza, we do the those The hidden things. menu, the secret menu. The se yeah. secret menu, that's right. Uh, but always do stuff. And, you know, you always – always have uh, game time drinks and things like that. I mean, it's uh, it's always a lot of fun at the brewery. All right, so that's going on there. We are here in the Hank booth. Our broadcast booth is brought to you by Truity Credit Union. Get your Chesty Lion Spirit debit card today. Each purchase you make with the card raises money for our schools. You swipe, they give. Visit a branch of trudycu.org forward slash spirit card to learn more. Stand up and fight for your Lawrence Lions. And, uh, I can't tell if we're getting ready for the national anthem here at Lawrence High School. Maybe, possibly. The, the, the band is coming out on the field. And, yes. Uh, uh, just very impressive in their full full uniforms, brand new uniforms that the Chesty Lion Band have. And, and uh, just uh, a, an award-winning uh, band leader does Lawrence High Chesty Lions have. And, and they just look great out there in their full uniforms now. So again, we have Lawrence High here on KLWN and our video streams at KLWN.com. GPM Sports on the YouTube page. We're going to take a quick time out in the action here for our national anthem and come back for the playoff action between LHS and Dodge City. Trudy Credit Union is a proud supporter of the Lawrence High Lions and all Lawrence Public Schools. We've donated over $61,000 to support our schools and teachers. Get your Chesty Lions Spirit debit card today. Each purchase you make with the card raises money for our schools. You swipe, we give. Visit a branch today or online at trudycu.org slash spirit card to learn more. Stand up and cheer for your Lawrence Lions with Truity. Trudy Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. It's nerve-wracking when your child starts driving. After all, you always hear about those high accident numbers for teens. You want to put your focus into making sure your child is safe and okay. And the last thing you want to deal with is a pesky insurance claim. The Law Office of Sally Kelsey and Lawrence will put you at ease. Sally Kelsey offers free consultations and has helped people with accidents for over 30 years. Let her help you navigate your claim and seek a fair settlement. That's Sally Kelsey, K-E-L-S-E-Y. 
And just like that, it all comes down to this. Fourth and goal. Matt, take yourself inside the huddle. What play are you calling? I'm saying, let's go to 23rd Street Brewery. Right now? Yeah. It's the biggest play of the game. No better time than that. There's no better spot to watch football than 23rd Street Brewery. We've got the Lions, the Firebirds, of course, the Jayhawks, and all the NFL action. Well, we better get out of here fast to catch the ending of the game. Dibs on the Haney Turkey Stack. That's the 23rd Street Brewery, corner of Clinton Parkway and Castle. Kirk Geeser State Farm Agency understands the importance of being a member in the Lawrence community and supporting local. They also understand the importance of supporting you and Lawrence, whether it's through the peace of mind you get with insurance or helping you with any financial questions or needs. Just like this high school broadcast, Kurt Geeser State Farm Agency will tackle any issues you need covered. Give Kurt and his team a call at 785-843-0003 or visit them online at www.kurtinsures.com. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. Welcome back into our pregame show brought to you by Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry. Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry is kind, caring, and understanding when you need it most. Come to the compassionate, caring dental team in Lawrence as we get ready for Lawrence High against Dodge City again here on KLWN. If you want to watch the video broadcast paired with the radio cast, you can find that at klwn.com. Click the sports tab, high school sports from there. Also, you can just go on YouTube, search GPM Sports. And if you have a smart TV at home, so if you have like a Roku, a Fire Stick, Apple TV, pull up the YouTube app and just search GPM Sports and you'll be able to find the Lawrence High game. You can watch and listen to our broadcast from there. I'm Derek Johnson. Along with me is the 2023 Kiwanis Substantial Citizen Award winner, <laughs> Matt <stop>. Llewellyn. <laughs> stop. Well, yeah, that was really cool last night. That, that was a neat thing. Uh, excited to be honored with a lot of other people that uh, a lot of other Boys and Girls Club awards given last night to, to great people who dedicate their lives to the hard work that the Boys and Girls Club does. But it was a big honor last night. It was a a neat dinner. Brian Haney was there and introduced me, and it, it, it was just a lot of fun. A lot of fun and really cool. Great, great friends and family there. Well, congratulations to you, you on that. And uh, I don't know what what's been a more proud moment uh, last week seeing the 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 uh, uh, the, the stepson getting on the the football field. Or Mike on the football field yeah. field was much better than me <laughs> last night. Uh, you know, Mike he he's had a rough year because he he's, he's been hurt, and uh, so. Never thought he would see the field on a varsity level. He he's been he played some on JV, but not much because he's just been he, he's he's banged up and and he really is 100% healthy now and able to go. But he's missed the season. He hasn't been able to practice or anything like that. So we certainly weren't expecting him to get out there on varsity. And the fact that he played last night uh, last week, even for and and actually the we missed him on the broadcast he actually played some offensive <laughs> wide receiver that he had never played he'd never played a wide receiver in a game at all but he'd played it in as a decoy in practice and so he'd been out there in practice but never in a game so it was just kind of funny that they put him in there at that and and he told me about it afterwards and he told me about and he and he told me some things that happened that we totally missed we did not see it uh until uh until later on there was a flag late in the game and the flag a guy had pushed Micah in the back and so and that was the flag call otherwise Micah thought he had a beeline for the quarterback and he was going to get the sack I mean that's what he was he was thinking and going in his mind and but ended up getting the flag instead but we didn't even know that was Micah yeah. we, we hadn't seen him at that point and then I when I saw him it's just kind of crazy the wheels came off <laughs> wheels came off the broadcast not that it really mattered at that point it was 56 to 3 and that's how it ended uh but nonetheless it was that was a really really cool moment and uh you know Micah might not see the field the rest of this this season and that's okay uh, he's a sophomore there's a lot more football to play for him and a lot more a lot more things that, that that he's going to be involved in, but it's great to be out here tonight. First, our first really cold night for football, and uh, and, and first playoff game. Not a lot of people made the trip from Dodge City, as you can imagine. We do have a couple guys from Dodge City who are who are uh, parked behind us here watching this game, and I don't blame them. A little bit warmer <laughs> here. Uh, Phil, Phil Stevenson, Wichita State, great uh, baseball players with us uh, 
back behind us. And he uh, coached Dodge City Community College for 16 years and played at Dodge City, played, or played for Wichita State for four years, All-American stud baseball player, and then uh, went on to play for the Padres a little bit. And Anyway, kind of cool to have Phil Stevenson in, in the broadcast booth with us. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, 46 degrees, as you mentioned, a bit of a cooler night. The Hank night. booth. I'm sorry. The I, Hank booth. We yeah. have, I'm not in talking. the Hank booth, yeah. Hey, you're the one who put the sign up. You got to. I, I, I need to remember. I That's always right. call this the Hank. We're in the Hank booth right we now are. on Lawrence High School. Indeed. Now, and now, as far as both these teams, Lawrence at 6-2. and two, They earned the sixth seed in the 6A West. It's always difficult playing in the West. You have some teams from, you know, areas where you don't know if they're playing everybody and, and maybe it moves down your seat a little bit. Uh, but they did earn a first-round playoff home game against Dodge City here. And, and the way it went for Lawrence High, they started out with a 41-22 win at Aletha South, 49-14 against Aletha West, and then 31-28 in double overtime against Shawnee Mission East. Uh, so it turns out that game, I mean, that's the difference of hosting a first-round playoff game. Then they lose at Aletha East for their first loss, 24-6, win over Shawnee Mission North, 37-22, lost to Gardner, 35-6, and most recently, the 31-24 win in overtime over Free State and the 56-3 win at Shawnee Mission West. So 6-2 and two out of the Sunflower League. For Dodge City, they come in out of the Western Athletic Conference, which is the same league as Hayes, Garden City, Liberal, and Great Bend. They got the 11 seed in the 6A west side of things after going three and five uh, defeated wichita west in their opener 13 to 8 lost the junction city 52 to 35 then defeated wichita south 27 20 but uh four straight losses from there to liberal 21 to 7 great bend 28 0 hayes 40 to 20 and garden city 40 to 13 led to their most recent game in which they defeated wichita southeast 41 to 12 to finish the season three and five and, of course, if you're looking for the Free State football game, they're actually taking on Garden City. That one's over on 92.9 The Bowl, as well as our video stream at KLWN.com and on our YouTube page. So, Matt, what are you looking for tonight? What are you looking for out of the Lions to, to feel like you have good momentum, uh, not just to try to win and keep your season alive, but to feel like you're heading in the right place next week and a possible meeting on the road against Derby? You know, one thing I'd like to see is a, st a quick start. We have not really come out of the – come out in any game this year guns blazing we really haven't it, it, it it's always taken us a while to get going on the field and i'd love to see that trend uh stop right here tonight in the play, first game of the playoffs and and really have some good movement and momentum early in the game and uh and just really really get it put it to them early on and and it's got to be it's got to be with banks uh you know tony jacobson will be our uh, Tony and uh, and Malcolm Paul will be our number one backs, and they'll, they will certainly get action. Taj Edwards, we learned before the game, is out with a broken foot, uh, and so he 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 could be four to eight weeks. I mean, he could be a, he could be a long time out. So he probably is done for the season. And, and no matter how far we go, even if, if if we go to state championship, we probably will not see Taj Edwards again. Uh, but two great running backs in Tony and uh, and Malcolm. And, and they both can do a lot of stuff on the field, and so I look look for them. But so you, and, and Banks loves or Coach Bowen loves a balanced attack. So you definitely are looking for the balanced attack. But Banks has got to get production out of his arm early, and he loves Mason Moseman. Jackson Becker has turned out to be an absolute stud at, at wide receiver as a sophomore. That youngster is going to do a lot of stuff. Gabe Winger is very, very capable. And we just have to see some production early on out of those guys. And so uh, balanced attack, Banks running the show, and a, and a quick start to this game. All right, well, uh, before we get into kickoff, as the two teams await the coin toss, we're going to pause 10 seconds for a station ID. This is LHS Football on KLWN. Depend on it. 1320 KLWN Lawrence and FM 1017 K269 GP Lawrence. Depend on it. Well, we are into action of Lawrence High running on the field at the very least here as they come through the LHS helmet at the south end of the stadium. Lawrence High will be in black uniforms with the LHS red and a white trim around them. They've got the black helmets with a red stripe through the middle of them. Dodge City is in white uniforms with red numbers. So uh, kind of red on red matchup here. LHS will be in the black 
and Dodge City in the white. Captains go out there for the Lions. Connor Nowak, Xander Thomas, Kem Allen, and one of their injured players. With yeah, Will, yeah, Will Hendricks. Hendricks. Yeah. And Will, so I talked to Will last week. There is a possibility he might be back for the for the dirt. Well, I'd say, I, let, let, let's not count our chickens, okay? <laughs> I, but I already am. Uh, but if we play again next week, mm -hmm. Will could be out there with us. That would be huge. It Who knows? Would, maybe Derby will lose. It, it, it would be. Will is a great, great, he's a great leader, great guy to have out there. I think what you just said is probably very, very far from ha the, the truth, far from happening. But you never know. I mean, stranger things have happened. And and, uh, uh, and either way, if, if we do go to Derby and we play Derby, it is going to be a brutal, brutal game. And we've got to have all of our weapons there ready to go for it. By the way, the captains for Dodge City, Alan Flores, who's their quarterback, Dylan Sande, he'll play on both sides of the field, Gabriel Aguilera and Cade Barnett. As the two teams await the coin toss here. But Xander Thomas, the, the, one of the big heroes in that Free State game, as he... Uh, Seemingly all year long, really. Oh, Xander has just had an outstanding senior year. He really has. But, man, he's just a stud out there. in make, But making that stop uh, at the two-yard line to end the game and and it, what a what a great stop that was uh, at, at Free State and probably one of the biggest moments in his young football career. And I think it's interesting when you look at the two games that Lawrence High played in overtime, who had some of the biggest plays of the game. You mentioned the tackle by Xander Thomas. He had a bunch of tackles in that Free State game, but also in the Shawnee Mission East game, their other game that went to overtime, went to overtime because he got a pick six to tie the game. So, um, you know, without Xander Thomas making a couple of those plays, Maybe Lawrence is sitting at five and three. Maybe they're not hosting a playoff game today. You right. never know. So, right. Uh, always works out in the end. It looks like Lawrence High is going to receive the opening kickoff. They're going to be going from left to right from your broadcast perspective. And Dodge City will be going from right to left in the opening quarter of play. And Josh Galbraith deep, as well as Tony Jacobson. Okay. Head coaching matchup in this one, by the way, Clint Bowen for Lawrence High. He's gone four and two in the postseason in his first two years. Glenn O'Neill is the head coach for Dodge City. In his third year, he's gone 0-2 in playoff games. Kickoff man is Rafe Ojeda. He is a 5'10 freshman, and he squibs it and covered off a bobble by Lawrence High as they'll take over for the first possession. I believe it was John Clark. Actually, it looks like Devin yeah. Foster. Yeah, Devin Foster fell on that ball, and uh, Devin just a sophomore, but really making a big, big impact on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Devin has really come in here and, and, and showed that that we have we're going to have at least one piece on one very strong piece on our defensive line next year, as he is just a sophomore. It'll be an empty all set. Seniors. Bowen will take a QB run up the middle, run to the right at the 30, lower a shoulder to the 34. It's Ojeda on the tackle and a productive gain of about eight or nine on first down for the Lions. Yep, nice way to get started, and there you go. You just, this is what I talked about. We've got to get started early, and, and that was a nice little pickup of eight yards there on first down. They're at the 34. They started the drive in the 26. To the right hash they go. As Jacobson in at the running back will get the carry up the middle. Ojeda hits him at the line of scrimmage. He's swung toward the first down marker, and it's going to be enough to move the chains. Yeah, it looked like he just got past and just dr uh, dropped forward a little bit, able to pick up three yards, two yards pl plus the one yard past the down marker. And it'll be first down and 10 from the 36. So Banks Bowen, the starting quarterback for LHS, 6'3", junior. The starting running back tonight, Tony Jacobson. We've seen Malcolm Paul and Jacobson also Edwards, but as Matt mentioned, broken foot keeping him out tonight. Bowen going to fake to the running back, drop back, good pocket. Finally throws downfield. A moon ball up in the air. Jacobson oh just my. can't grab it. A bit underthrown. And, and that was just launched into space, and, and Tony just was hoping it was going to be in front of him. It was behind him, and he couldn't get back far enough to make that catch. The starting receivers, Gabe Winger, a junior, Mason Moseman, a senior, and Jackson Becker, a sophomore, the tight end. Connor Nowak back in the lineup, the senior. To the offensive line after this play. Second and 10 for the Lions from the pistol at the right. It'll be a fake, some miscommunication. Now Bowen looking around. He tries to take it himself. He's hit behind the line. He falls to the line of scrimmage. But the big tackle made there by Neri Canones. Yeah, and it, it did definitely looked like a miscue on the handoff, but don't know exactly what was going on in the mind because then Tony was ready to block, and 
missed his blocker. I mean, it, did, it, it, it didn't look good back there in the backfield on that exchange. Third down and 10, first third down of the game. Bowen will roll out to the left, looking downfield, escapes one. He's gonna take off, lower a shoulder, hit out of bounds. Wow. Late toss out of bounds, it, it won't draw a flag. It did not. It, uh, it, I would certainly think that was borderline because he, he did get thrown to the ground by that defender. It was about a five and a half, six yard gain, so they're gonna have to punt from the 42. By the way, the starting line was Johnson, Hernandez, Gray, Alvarado, and Allen from left to right. So fourth down and four as the Lions will punt away for the first time with Andre Lafort. Two return men are back. And Lafort gets off a low one. It'll hit at the opposite 42, take a sideways and diagonal bounce, and then all the way to the 30. Touch just inside of it at the 29. So in the end, about a 29-yard punt by Andre Lafort, and the Dodge City offense will come out for the first time. And even though that was not a three and out, it certainly had every appearance of a three and out. Not a lot of production other than that eight-yard run uh, by Banks and then a six-yard run for just to get out of trouble uh, that really meant nothing other than just gaining, gaining a few yards and not getting the first down. Well, to your point on LHS starting slow, they've given up 60 points in the first quarter. That's more than they've given up in any other quarter. They've also scored their second least amount of points by just a point in the first quarter. It'll be a QB keep for Alan Flores up the middle and it's plugged up only a yard, bring up second and nine. Yeah, and why anybody tries to run up the middle on Lawrence Hyde is beyond me because uh, our, our, our defensive front is, is just awesome. And with Connor Nowak in there healthy, I just love everything that young man's all about as always. Foster rotates out. So Flores, the junior starting quarterback for Dodge City. They'll run a little bit of shotgun. They'll run a little bit of some flex bone stuff. They'll send Aguilera in motion. Flores will roll out to the right, step up, throw. It's going to be caught near the sticks by Jaden Amaro. They'll give him the first down. Wow, and that's crazy because he I would say that he got the ball there, but was immediately sent very far back and ended up and there were no whistles. If there would have been a whistle right away, I'd get it, but there were no whistles whatsoever, and he was pushed back probably eight, eight yards. So First and 10 from the 40. This time under center in the flex bone. They'll send one in motion. And then a whistle and a timeout by Dodge City. Yeah, and just a great, uh, uh, Makai Hernandez just did a great job getting to him as soon as he caught that ball. And it seemed like he landed on this side of the sticks. Now, you know, you can't second guess the officials there. They've got the call. But the fact that I didn't hear the whistle, that was the, that to me was the problem. Well, it'll be first and 10 after the timeout, 9.03 in the quarter. By the way, the rest of the starting offense for Dodge City. The left wing back is Gabriel Aguilera, a 5'10 junior. Ryan Gonzalez, the 5'8 junior fullback. You'll also see Kate Barnett in there at fullback. Bryson Unzueta, a 5'11 junior, is the right wing back. Starting receivers, Jaden Amaro. You'll see Tochio Coro. A little bit of maybe some other players as well. The tight end, Adam Kisner, a sophomore. And the offensive line, Hernandez at left tackle, Moreno at left guard, Cruz at center, Reyes at right guard, and Quinones at right tackle. Overall, the offensive line for Dodge City averages just 232 pounds. LHS should be able to get a surge. First down and 10. Flores going to give to one of the players, Howard, running from left to right. And he picks up about two yards in a cloud of dust. <laughs> That's a good phrase. It'll be second down and eight. The starting lineup for the LHS defense, Connor Nowak, Andrew Nelson, Devin Foster on the D-line. We've already seen them sub some players in. You'll see Larney Finney, Cam Allen, Cam Clark on there as well. Jahir Johnson, Jaden Harrell as linebackers. Josh Galbraith is kind of a safety linebacker hybrid. Ben Markers, Andrew Thomas, Noah Richardson in the secondary. Jacobson, Price, and Hernandez out there as well. Flores throws, corner out near side. It's caught by Okoro up to the 40, and he's knocked out at the 35-yard line. Yeah, Makai Hernandez makes a nice stop as soon as he catches that ball, but that's going to be good for about 20, 30 yards on that one. So all the way in the LHS territory and a good start for Dodge City. Flores came in completing just 41% of his passes for 948 yards with six touchdowns to five picks. He's been a good runner as well, but already two for two to start with a couple first down deliveries. 
First and 10 from the 35 at the left hash. They'll send one in motion and they'll give it up the middle. The fullback Barnett running hard to about the 30, maybe inside of it. And Bar Barnett is a big, big boy, 6'2", 215. But he looks, he looks taller than that right out there with, uh, as, as that the defensive front for Lawrence High is no, they're not small kids, but, uh, but Barnett just looks like a, a lot bigger specimen. And Barnett, by the way, also the starting defensive end for the Demons. And that'll be a shotgun set, second down and medium. Out of the gun for Flores, high snap, able to field it, throws a quick out near side, sliding grab is made, and nope, then dropped nope. at the end. Yep. It was Okoro who actually caught it initially sliding, but then the ball popped out as he was trying to secure it. The official was gonna signal catch at first, and then he saw it dribble out. And probably would have, would, he was, would have had the first down, I believe. Yes. Uh, but um, not to be, as that ball came out. And they are double teaming. They're they're really putting a lot of focus on Connor Nowak out there, as they know Connor is a very very dangerous guy. He he gets and loves to get in the backfield and get to that quarterback. He's the near side defensive end. Third down and five. Flores out of the gun, going to roll to the right. Pressure comes, throws to the sideline, caught for a first down, and angling out at about the 20 yard line. I believe that's Cooper Spear. Actually, make that Jaden Amaro. And Connor was almost that time. He was almost untouched and. And the quarterback's running to the far side away from, from Connor and able to make that play and pick up that first down for Dodd City. Flores has three first downs throwing in the air this drive, and they're in the red zone for the first time at the 20. LHS plays a multiple defense. Flores will take it right up the gut and pick up about three. So second down and seven, Galbraith on the tackle for LHS. And they choose the road less traveled there, but actually pick up three yards. So get a little bit productivity up the ground, up the middle on Lawrence High. Dodge City's averaging about 21 points per game. Their season high of 41, their season low of zero. Lawrence giving up 21 and a half per game. Most they've given up is 35. The least they've allowed is three. Flores again out of the gun. They'll send a man in motion. He's going to roll to the left, fake a run, then fire a dart. It's going to be caught again. And Amaro working toward the pylon will be short of it. Another first down throw from Flores to Amaro in its first and goal, Demons. And Flore Flores was absolutely sandwiched there at the very end, right after he threw that football. And so he's going he's gonna to feel that. But great, great pickup by Dodge City. They're up to the LHS two-yard line on the first and goal. Amaro who came in leading the team in catches and receiving yards. already has been very active on this first drive. Under the flex bone now, Ryan Gonzalez is the fullback. They've got basically an extra fullback as they'll send Bone in motion and they'll give it to Gonzalez running between his guard. He's gonna get up to the goal line and they'll call him in. He crosses the plane, Ryan Gonzalez in the end zone for a touchdown and gets Dodge City on the board with 5.56 to go in the first quarter. And a little bit of uh, extracurricular goings on there in the end zone. Kayvon Price kind of got into it a little bit with uh, one of their players after the play was clearly over. And you definitely do not want a personal foul after a touchdown. So uh, the coaches are going to want to keep an eye on Kayvon for that, for that kind of thing. Rafi Ojeda kicks the PAT a low one, but through the uprights. Dodge City 7, Lawrence High 0, 5.56 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds on KLWN, depend on it. The Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry in Lawrence welcomes Dr. Kelly Dummerth. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Dummerth. I have recently started at Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry. What I'm super excited to bring to the table is a whole other focus on the aesthetic side of smile design, bringing in Lawrence Dental Aesthetics so that we can focus on the cosmetic side of smile makeovers, Botox, filler, whitening, crowns, veneers, anything that you can think of that can really enhance your smile. The Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry. Kind, caring, and understanding when you need it most. Online at kansascenterforsedationdentistry.com. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. 5.56 left in the first quarter with Matt Llewellyn. I'm Derek Johnson. 7-0 Dodge City. So, again, Lawrence High maybe struggling to get out to a hot start. 
and they'll have to uh, overcome that once again. We've seen so many times this year where maybe they got down 7-0, 14-0, and, and had to come back, and in a lot of cases did. Now in the playoffs, Most though. Most cases. Yes. <laughs> Six out of two. And actually, the the uh, they did get off to a good start last week, but 56-3, to three, <laughs> that's right. what's going to happen in those kind of games. Ojeda will have the kickoff. Jacobson and uh, Galbraith deep for the Lions. First one was a squibber. This one a little more boot. Hits at the 10. Takes a hard bounce into the hands of Galbraith, who runs up through the middle. Galbraith to the 20, and he's cut down at the 25. So nice, uh, nice pick up there by Josh. Gains about uh, 23 on, on the play. He's got it right at about the two. Well, by the way, I mentioned Dodge City averages 232 on their offensive line. Lawrence has at 287, so certainly they have the push, you'd think, up there. The, the, the weight advantage, yes. Well, Dodge City, by the way, runs a 4-2-5 defense. Four down linemen, two linebackers. They have an extra safety. As Bowen out of the gun will take a quick throw over the middle. It's going to be grabbed at the 30. And that'll be a gain of about five yards. Mason Mosman, the receiver. So Mosman, the senior, makes his first grab of the day. And it's second down and medium for the Lions as Bowen and LHS running hurry up. It's going to be a quick power out to the left for Bowen, who gets hit hard, then stays up and crosses the first down marker to move the chains. Yeah, it looks like you give him about six yards on that carry by Banks. Bowen came in over 1,200 passing yards, 11 touchdowns to three interceptions, and over 600 and are, rushing yards. They are playing hurry up because they just got right up that line, and here you go, Derek. First and 10 from the 36-yard line again out of the gun. Bowen will drop back, looking over the middle, throws over the middle, almost intercepted. Wow. Wide open, Mason Moseman, but uh, uh, <laughs> a player comes in for Dodge City and just takes it away. Bryson Unzieta. Thank you. Thank you. Unzieta <laughs> uh, just comes up and makes that play to knock that football down. Otherwise, Mason would have had set six. It's second now down second down and 10. Bowen's only thrown three interceptions all season. Running back out, there's Jacobson right now. who get a fake. Bowen keeps himself up the middle. Slips one, slips two, slips three. Carrying a fourth up to the 50. First and 10 Lions. And you really like the way that play uh, developed and, and just watching Banks run. He saw where his openings were. He just took them, and he didn't try to go outside or inside. He took them right between the players on, on three different occasions to get that 14 yards. Nice play by Banks. First down and 10, right in midfield. Quick play again, speed option left, and it is covered. Bowen goes straight down. Dylan Sunday playing well on a Friday, and it's second down and 10. <laughs> uh, Banks was looking for the pitch and looking for the pitch, but e either way, I think Banks was thinking they were covered, and they had that, that play called. So no gain on the play on that one, second down 10. By the way, Sunday, the junior, he's the team leading tackler for the Dodge City defense, 95 coming into this one. Bone will give straight up the middle to Jacobson, tripped up toward the line. It'll be about two yards. Quinones on the tackle for the Demons, third and long upcoming. On well, that starting D line for Dodge City, Rodriguez, Moreno, Quinones, and Barnett. Ojeda and Sunday are the linebackers. Amaro and Howard are the corners. Sheck is the rover. Aguilera, the bandit, which are just kind of basically safety hybrids, and Okoro is the safety. Six Malcolm Paul in now for uh, Wyatt Hendricks. And it looks like they put uh, put Malcolm in at receiver. Jacobson still in the backfield at running back. I think they also subbed in Ty Silvers to the offensive line. Junior. Third down and eight for the Lions. They've got to get up to the 40-yard line out of the gun from the left hash. Bowen will drop back. Three-man rush. Pressure from the middle. Throws downfield. He's got a man open, and it's no! complete. Mason Mosman in and out of his hands. I think it's Deep. actually Wingard. Was that Wingard? Well, that's a little bit embarrassing. I've got the binoculars right on him, and I, could, I thought I saw a seven. But I did not. Uh, and we still can't see. Sorry about that, folks. But, yeah, in and out of his hands. It was a beautiful play. Uh, we'll call it 40-plus 40, 40 yards in the air. And just and he was covered. He had a man right up behind him, but Banks threw it perfectly, and he just missed it. It just in and out of his hands. Lines have to punt. 
And LaFort able to get a clean punt away. It's dropped by Dodge City. LHS jumps on it. They've got the football. And the Lions will take over right around the red zone. And what a, what a play. It's Hayden what, Reese. Way to play. What a heads up. Uh, and they knew exactly what was going to happen. Hayden Reese, the senior. And they, they get down there quick. And that ball bobbled and on the ground. And Hayden and a, and a couple of other Lions going for it. But Hayden comes up with the, with the prize. Well, Dodge City, uh, there's kind of an ill-advised field. It was a low ball that he tried to grab and just deflected off him. And Reese covers the fumble. First turnover of the game. Lions take over at the 21, first and 10. And a fumbled snap the other way, but whistle blown. It's going to be a false start on Lawrence. It's not a clean start for Lawrence. 3.21 to go in the quarter. Good news is they're right around the red zone. And trailing by just seven. So Bowen with 23 total touchdowns this year, over 1,800 total yards. He's going to fake to Jacobson, keeping himself up the middle. Now plants and heads out to the right side, up to the 20. Gets good block, up to the 15, the 10. Cuts back in at the 5. Wow! To the end zone and tiptoeing through. Touchdown, Banks Bowen. What a run by Banks. He absolutely thought he was going to go out somewhere on the 20 or 15, somewhere in between there. But Banks just absolutely threads the needle. I was watching his feet all the way up the field, and he just hugs that sideline to get to the end zone and touch down Lawrence High with a chance to tie it right here with the extra point. A quick score, 26-yard scamper for Banks Bowen. Bit of a low snap, but a good hold. The kick is through the uprights. Lawrence High 7, Dodge City 7, 3.11 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds on KLWN, depend on it. Your quarterback getting sacked is about as disruptive as flooding, fire damage, or mold infested walls to your home or business. Get up off the turf and go for the end zone with Rainbow Restoration, locally owned with over 20 years of experience. They can help you with any water, fire, and mold cleanup with their IICRC certified technicians, free assessments, and local experts to help you from start to finish. Call Rainbow Rainbow Restoration to solve your home disaster at 785-371-2400 and get your phone call answered by a real human instead of an answering service. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. 311 left in the first quarter. Lawrence High 7, Dodge City 7. A big answer as Banks Bowen, a 26-yard rushing touchdown set up after the muffed punt that was recovered by Hayden Reese for Lawrence High. And we are all square. I mean, that was a big muffed punt. There was an opportunity for Dodge City to really have all the momentum early. And they pretty much gave it right back. Bowen capitalizing. See what Dodge City can do on their second drive as we await the kick from Andre Laforte, who nailed the last PAT to tie the game at 7. Yeah, and it really was. It was uh, Hayden Reese recovering that ball was just absolutely gold for Lawrence High as, as it appeared again that Lawrence High was going to have zero momentum in the first quarter, but uh, uh, gets it tied up, and here we go. It's a new ball game. Coach kick. It'll be fielded at the 16-yard line. It's going to be taken by Unzietta up to not the 36-yard line. Maybe even further up than that. And uh, so the Lions here on defense trying to make a make a big stop to take a first lead of this game. Trying to first quarter, 305 left to go. Tie score here at Lawrence High School Football Stadium. They've got it at their own 38 officially. Is about three men go in motion. Out of the flex bone here, it's going to be a give to Bone running left side, and he's going to be crunched at the 47. <laughs> and, I mean, and Josh Galbraith, the, the player had been stopped by Xander Thomas and, um, and, and Jalen Parks, but Galbraith comes up and makes it, gives it a little extra push and makes sure he knows that they're in chesty lion territory here. Uh, the 42, I think I misspoke and said 47. Second down here after a gain of about four. Again, a couple players go in motion at yeah. the same time for Dodge. It's going to be a give to Bone, this time running from left to right, up the right tackle, and it'll be stopped at the 45. It'll be third and short. Yeah, Galbraith in on that, that tackle there. 
Four, or third down and three. The line to gain is up the 48 yard line. As Dodge City offense averaging 287 yards per game, 139 in the air, 160 on the ground, so pretty balanced. We saw them hit some big pass plays on their first drive en route to a touchdown. So far they've kept it on the ground at the beginning of this drive. And it'll be a give up the middle to the fullback running right. He's twisted around and Barnett has enough for the first down. Yeah, and he had, to, had a player in the backfield and with, that got an initial hit on him, uh, and, and that was um, uh, Devin Foster, and then nobody able to come up and help, help Devin with that stop. It, he's able to twist his way and get that first down. Uh, hair away from Lions territory right at about the 50-yard line. First down and 10 at the 50. Flores comes under center. They'll send one in motion. He'll drop back to throw. All sorts of pressure. He's swallowed up, sacked. Josh Galbraith gets through there. And Larney and, Finney. And you give that to both those gentlemen because they both had him. And they, <laughs> uh, what, a, what a great sack and momentum builder that could be for this defense. Took him back nine yards, did those two guys. So Finney, he, he had junior. no time to even think about what was going on as they were coming and they got to him quick. Galbraith, the sophomore, it's second down and 19, all the way back to their own 41 after the loss of nine. Flores under center in the flex bone. Bone comes in motion. He'll drop straight back. He'll throw a screen to Bone. It's thrown short and complete. And again, Finney back there, uh, as well as uh, uh, Kem Allen, and also uh, Devin Foster back there, uh, putting big time pressure on this quarterback and this is kind of what we've been used to seeing from this defense a lot of pressure on the quarterback from a lot of different areas and with the, a lot of the focus on connor nowak uh it takes away a little pressure from the other guys and they're able to come in and make some big plays it's happened on those two plays right there while that wasn't a sack it was uh, he definitely was under a lot of pressure and they've loaded him up in the middle this time Third and a mile for Flores. Galbraith who again. Swallowed up. Galbraith around the backside edge. Hit him as he was trying to throw and went down with the ball. Another big loss on the play. Another big sack for Galbraith. And the Lawrence High defense forces a punt. Call that eight yards on the loss for that one. Fourth and a mile. Lions are going to get this ball back. Jackson Becker deep for the Lions. And Becker again. Uh, just you can see why he's back there if you've seen any of the last few games here for the Lions Jackson Becker has not he, he doesn't let anything out of his hands his hands are like glue fourth down and 26 the low line drive punt gotten away hits at the 38 Becker fields at the 31 off a hop and is immediately hit a few times <laughs> trying to power through but he's only going to get back to where he initially caught it. And, and that would be the guts on Becker there because there was no question he was going to get hit and hit hard. But he probably, by, by taking it off the bounce and getting it and holding on to it while he was hoping to, to gain some yards, what he did was that ball was definitely on a, a trajectory that probably would have rolled in at least another 10, maybe 15 yards. So he, he in, in effect, he actually did help the Lions out there because they would have been 10 or 15 yards back from where they are now well, at the 30-yard line. First and 10, 26.6 seconds to go in the first quarter. Tie game, 7-all. Bowen out of the gun, snap a bit left. Quick throw left, it's caught on the run. And that's going to be around a first down mark for Gabe Wingard. Uh, nine yards on the play up to the 40. Clock continues to run. Lawrence again showing some no huddle. We'll see if they actually snap it before the end of the quarter, though. And Clint Bowen has both his hands up to say hold. So I think that's going to be our final play of the first. And indeed it is. Lawrence High 7, Dodge City 7, one quarter down, three to go in the first round of the 6A playoffs here for Keisha. We'll be back for quarter number two after this timeout with Matt Llewellyn. I'm Derek Johnson. You're listening on KLWN. Depend on it. There are a lot of Mexican restaurants that claim to be authentic or think their food tastes that way, but nothing compares to Mama's Tamale Shop. Enjoy artistically prepared tamales, empanadas, and street tacos with your choice of meats and salsas that are prepared fresh to order. Not sure what to order? Mama's will always give you a sample. Relax and enjoy great food and try one of the fresh waters or jaritos on the patio. Authentic Mexican food. Come hungry, leave satisfied. Mama's Tamale Shop, 9th in Louisiana. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320. KLWN, depend on it. 
Second quarter of action here on KLWN. Our broadcast today brought to you by 23rd Street Brewery. We'll have our 23rd Street Brewery halftime show coming up in about 12 minutes from right now. We're tied at seven. Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson. And Lawrence with the football now going from right to left. They're at the 40 yard line, second down and one. Bowen will play fake to Paul, dropping back all sorts of time. Great pocket, now escapes out to the right. Late pressure comes, looks to go the other way, runs up the middle. He's dragged, he's hit, he's abused, and he's going down at the 36. Loss of about three or four. That was an absolute coverage sack there for Dodge City. LHS line did a great job initially. But just nobody got open. Yeah, exactly, and, 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 and Banks actually did a really good job uh, losing just three on that. I mean, uh, he, he was, uh, by the time he, he finally realized he had to run, he, he ran five or six yards, but he was deep, and so credit that to Banks, even though that's going to be a little bit of a loss. Third and four, quick throw over the middle, caught first down and more, and the Lions move on to Dodge City side of the field. That's Jackson Becker on the little slant route. All the way up to the Dodge City 46-yard line. And again, Jackson Becker so is just like glue, man. His hands are, he, he just catches whatever comes his way. He's the lone receiver out at the right side. Jacobson, the running back, three receivers to the left. It'll be a sweep right for Bowen, who is going to be walked out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Lions score over 32 points per game. Their season high of 56 was last week. Dodge City gives up 26 and a half points per game. It'll be a pistol set for Bowen in the offense on this second down and medium. Speed option left for Bowen. He'll keep it himself up to the 40. Finds a hole at the 35, the 30. Up to the 25, 20. Knocked around inside. And LHS in the red zone. <laughs> Just a great, great run there. Again, follows his blockers. He knows where his blockers are. And, and able to, to read the defense and just do everything he can to gain as many yards he can. Nice, nice run there by Banks. They mark him to the 17. It'll be a give up the middle to Paul, but a flag was thrown. Some linemen left before the others, and so we get a false start on Lawrence High. Well, last time they had a five-yard penalty back the very next play, they had a 26-yard touchdown run by Banks Bowen, so see if history repeats itself here. They have a first and 15 at the 22. Bowen's at over 25 yard for uh, Bowen on that. And now on the first and 15, give up the middle to Malcolm Paul up to the 20. Gain of two. Well, Bowen's at over 100 yards rushing twice this year. He might be well on pace to do it again tonight. Second down and 13 upcoming. This is technically the first meeting that's ever happened between these two schools on the high school football field. Bowen out of the gun from the left hash, high snap, rolls out to the right, throws to the sticks incomplete, just off the yep. hands of Becker. Yeah, just out of, just threw it just a little bit out of bounds, and but that one Becker not able to hang on to, but he might have been out of bounds anyway had he caught that. Yeah, it was very much toward the sideline. Would have been a few yards short of the sticks. It's now third down and 13 for LHS. The line to gain is up inside the 10 yard line. Jacobson is the running back. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Out of the gun for Bowen. Three come, maybe a QB spy. Bowen plenty of time, throws into the end zone over the middle. Mosman in the back of the end zone, just marked oh. out. And he caught that ball, but out of the end zone. One of the, uh, exactly like that we saw at the Free State game, Mason Mosman going to the back of the end zone, wide open, but not able to connect this time with Banks. And he was able to secure the catch, just not able to get the foot in bounds. It's fourth and 13, they keep the offense out there. 9.44 to go in the second quarter, and now we're gonna get a timeout from Lawrence High. Well, and trying to think if this would be, uh, it would be about a 36 yard, field goal 37 yard field goal yeah attempt. something like that probably a little bit long for andre uh, and certainly susceptible to the block as andre is a does like to line drive him uh but you can see here why clint is going to go for it although it is fourth and 13. well by the way update from over at free state high school that on 92.9 the bull 
And the Firebirds leading 14 to nothing over Garden City. It was a Wesley Edison touchdown and then a 58 yard touchdown by Grant Lincoln there in the second quarter there with a 14 point lead. If they win, they'd be projected to play at Manhattan. If Lawrence wins here tonight, they'd be projected to play at Derby, assuming the higher seeds hold, which you never know, but most likely. So fourth down, the offense still out there. At the 20 yard line, they've got to get well inside the 10. Bowen will drop back, four man rush, steps into the pocket and to the left. He's being chased, he's gonna take off up to the 15 and he'll be knocked out of bounds as both players lower their shoulder and Sunday able to hit him out. So it'll be first and 10 Dodge City as he was about four or five yards short of the sticks. Yeah, nice little run there, but uh, certainly not 13 which is the number we needed for Banks. And I wonder with another year of playing quarterback next year, because I'm surprised he didn't at least throw it up. Worst case, it's incomplete. It's their ball anyway. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 13 for Dodge City. So, uh, They've got a long way to go to get a touchdown, and our defense has been pretty solid. I and mean, once we get through the first quarter, our defense has really been solid. So uh, see what the Lions' D can do here. I mentioned they've given up 60 in the first quarter. They've only given up 38 in quarter number two so far this year. Coming in motion is it going to be Gonzalez. It's going to be a give up the middle. And the fullback able to take it across the 20 is Gonzalez. He's about eight yards. And stopped by Xander Thomas, who comes up from the safety position and, and <laughs> just gets, and, and, and Xander is a lot, giving up a lot of pounds and a lot of height on that guy, and Xander able to stop him in his tracks. Well, Gonzalez is the team leader in runs, rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. Took that one for nine. It's second down and one from the 22-yard line. A lot of movement from the LHS defense. Now a whistle blown. A timeout by Dodge City. So they'll have one left in the half. Lawrence will have two. We'll take a 30-second break with them. 9.01 to go, 7-7 in quarter number two on KLWN. Depend on it. Sigler Pharmacy strives to make each customer's pharmacy experience as smooth and simple as possible. Sigler believes that being a local pharmacy means providing health care services to its patients that are customized to meet their needs. Sigler can help manage medication refills for hypothyroidism, high blood pressure, diabetes, and more. They will even pre-pack your monthly med box and deliver it straight straight to your door. Let their knowledgeable pharmacist at Sigler Pharmacy help manage your medications and questions. Sigler Pharmacy cares. Call today. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. 7-7, seven seven, first round of the 6A playoffs here at Lawrence High School. With Matt Wellen, I'm Derek Johnson. 9-0-1 to go in quarter number two. And Dodge City scored first, LHS responded, just got stopped on a fourth down inside the red zone. Now Dodge City with the football for the third time tonight. There was a couple sacks last drive that really did in Dodge City. One and a half from Josh Galbraith, the other half from Larney Finney. Give up the middle, goes to Gonzalez, first down up to the 25, powers to about the 26 or 27. And Gonzalez, the 5'8", 175-pound junior, Showing his ability as the fullback. Came in with 86 carries for 427 yards and five touchdowns, averaging five yards per carry. First and 10 to the 27. Lions are giving up 200 and about 10 rushing yards per game on the defensive side. Only 81 passing yards allowed per game. Give again to the fullback, this time it's Barnett who's powering forward through the middle. Just shy of the 35-yard line. So Dodge City doing a good job on these early downs. And this has been something we've seen at different points this year, whether it was Shawnee Mission East, Gardner. At times, Lawrence High has struggled a bit with the flex bone. Oh, you, there's no question. They've, they've struggled with the flex bone. And Bowen does not like it. And he doesn't <laughs> like to prepare for it either because he just hates it so much. But there was a, a, a big hole in the line. And and that's where Barnett's target was, and that's exactly what he went through, and we were not able to stop it up with our linebackers. High Second snap. three, it was bobbled. He knocked it in the air. Now he just has to throw it to no one. This could be intentional grounding. It was past the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure he was out of the tackle box. 
No, but he was going to get absolutely annihilated by Connor Nowak, and he, he knew that, and he just he just tossed that thing up. But they're going to call it uh, just, incomplete. just an incomplete pass. As, as there were no white shirts around, it had a, a much better shot of getting, getting picked off by a lion, but it, he clearly threw it out of bounds, and he was not out of the pocket. That brings up a third down and about three yards to go for the Dodge City offense. This is a pretty crucial play early on in this one here in Lawrence High School. And under center will be Flores, who's got over. And you would think they're going to be watching that uh, that running back right here. They'll send one in motion, give to the fullback yep. straight up the gut. First down and more for Gonzalez to the 41. He'll and move the sticks. It's the same thing he did the last time, just took it straight between the, the small little hole, and he had the momentum, and so the linebacker just had absolutely no chance of stopping him on short yardage. He already he had the, I mean, once he crossed the line of scrimmage, he had a two easy yards to get the first down, and he had so much momentum, was able to go up four more. It was Ben Marker eventually, the safety, making the stop. First and 10 for Dodge City from their own 41. They've got two receivers to each side. Gonzalez is the running back to the right hip of Flores. They'll send Aguilera in motion, and Flores will throw near side, caught on kind of a dangerous ball, sliding to the ground, Okoro. He'll be about a few yards short of the sticks. Price almost was able to cut that one off if it was thrown a little less behind him. Yeah, Galbraith was in the vicinity too. But in the end, an eight-yard completion to Tochi Okoro, who... Leads the team in yards per catch and receiving touchdowns, and it's second down and two. They're a yard shy of midfield. And under center again goes Flores with Gonzalez in at fullback. Gonzalez gets the carry up the middle. Shot out of a cannon first down, and he's brought down by Xander Thomas at the LHS 44. And, and you know, this is something that has not been a problem for Lawrence High that much this year. But it is absolutely a problem now as the Lions are giving them him a hole in their line and the way they're lined up. And the linebackers are just not able to stop them once they cross that line of scrimmage. And this is they've got to get that figured out because that's ex what's happened now four times. First and 10 to the LHS, 44 out of the gun, dropping back Flores. Steps into the pocket, unloads downfield, looking for Okoro, can't make it catch. And no flags on the play as there were three, he was, uh, two lines were right on him and there was another line very, very close, but incomplete pass here on first and 10, brings up second and 10. Well, they took a shot, Okoro at six foot three. He's thrown a bit too far inside and a bit too far, but I think was talking about and good a lot, coverage. And a lot of coverage. Yes. <laughs> if, if that would have been thrown any different spot of the field, it might have been picked off. Second down and 10 for the Demons. Line to gains up to the LHS 34. There's two receivers at the near side. Fullback in there now is Cade Barnett. Barnett will get the call up the middle. Actually, maybe a fumbled Fumble. exchange. It's on Fumble. the ground, and Xander Thomas has it for Lawrence. Yes, he does. Xander comes up big again. Uh, that senior is just one of my favorite players because, man, he is just doing it all over the field. What a great guy Xander Thomas is. And, and, uh, and that time, that play, and listen, Whatever happened on that play, I was going to say, okay, lines are bunched up more on the, on the front line, so he didn't have that given hole that he had had on, on several plays earlier. And Barnett, and they knocked that ball out of Barnett's hand. Xander Thomas able to fall on it. First down, Lawrence High on the 43-yard line. First and 10, and it'll be a speed option right for Bowen. He'll keep it himself to the 45. Jets across the 50, and he's down right at the first down marker. So Bowen continues to rack up big rushing yards. They will give him enough to move the sticks. And the Lions quickly into Dodge City territory on one play. They're at the 47. Lions have put up 70 points in the second quarter. That's their second best quarter scoring. Looking for their first points of quarter two here in this one. Past the halfway mark of the quarter. Give will be up the middle to Jacobson. And he's wrapped up at the 45 rather quickly. Sunday helps make the tackle along with Ty Sheck. Yeah, give Tony two yards on that play. We haven't seen a ton of plays for the running back so far. I don't think Malcolm Paul's had a carry. We've seen him in at receiver as he's going to come in now at receiver. And Jacobson's had a few carries here or there. It's mostly been Bowen either keeping it or throwing it. Yeah, Paul just has one carry for two yards so far. Second down and eight. Bowen will sweep out to the right. Works the sideline and steps out 
at about the 41-yard line. It'll be third and short. Yeah, so let's see. So giving him about, uh, giving him four yards on that play. 4.56 to go in the quarter. Lawrence has two timeouts left, one for the visiting Dodge City. Third down, Bowen will flip Jacobson from his right to his left hip. And he'll drop back, take a quick throw over the middle, grabbed by Jackson Becker. Enough for a first down, just barely. A little slant route over the middle. Good haul in by Becker. He caught it as he was getting hit. And just and just does not let that ball out of his hands. He's just uh, able to scoop it up, throwing it about a little less under the waist, and uh, able to pick it up and fall on it right away, pick up the first down, Jackson Becker. So they move the chains to the 36-yard line out of the pistol now. Jacobson is the running back, and Jacobson will get it up the middle. He has to bounce a bit to the left, slips one, and he's going to be knocked down hard by Sunday, but a solid gain on first down for Jacobson to about the 30. Yeah, solid gain on what should have possibly been just a, a, a very small pickup, and Jacobson turns it into a very substantial one for seven yards. Again, LHS getting to the line quickly, running, hurry up, high snap, fielded. It's going to be given to Jacobson again, slides through a couple and across the 25, a first down to the 23. And you love to see your running back make plays like that because he just, he, he makes, he follows his blockers, but man, he has got the power and he is able to push guys away and pick up those six yards. One receiver near side, two to the right, another quick play, another give to Jacobson to the 20. Jacobson might have lost the ball. No way, he's still going and now he's tumbled over. Wow, wow. I think the ball, you thought the ball was his helmet. Yeah. It was just moving forward so fast and he just took those legs and was moving and moving and moving, able to make a big, big play. Another quick play up to the 10, another give to Jacobson who steps over a bit of turmoil at the line of scrimmage and picks up about two. He might be exhausted at this point. I, I don't know, man. He's, he is rolling and Lawrence just using gonna hurry that power again. to keep it up. They are going 90 miles per hour. They're at the eight, second down and goal. Bowen going to fake, keep himself to the left. He stumbles and lost his footing, and it'll be third and goal at the eight. Old turf monster on that one. I do wonder, though, off those last two plays, if Lawrence got a little too tired and tripped on themselves. They were running so fast, they're going to slow it down a little bit before this play. Three minutes to go in half number one. And now they are slowing things down. Yeah, and I don't blame them. And a timeout. You know, I just say, I wouldn't even be surprised if they called a timeout here, in which they do. We'll have one left. We'll take a 30-second break with them. 2.55 to go in the second quarter, 7-7. Seven to seven. This is KLWN. Depend on it. And just like that, it all comes down to this. Fourth and goal. Matt, take yourself inside the huddle. What play are you calling? I'm saying, let's go to 23rd Street Brewery. Right now? Yeah. It's the biggest play of the game. No better time than that. There's no better spot to watch football than 23rd Street Brewery. We've got the Lions, the Firebirds, of course the Jayhawks, and all the NFL action. Well, we better get out of here fast to catch the ending of the game. Dibs on the Haney Turkey Stack. That's the 23rd Street Brewery, corner of Clinton Parkway and Castle. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320. KLWN, depend on it. 2.55 left in quarter number two with Matt Llewellyn. I'm Derek Johnson. It is 7-7, low-scoring game so far, but LHS on the precipice of scoring its third down at the eight-yard line, third and goal here for the Lions. They ran as fast of hurry-up as you could, just spamming run plays with Tony Jacobson. Worked their way up here, but now they face a critical down against the Dodge City defense. Third and goal at the eight. Bowen out of the gun is going to scramble out to the right, step back through the middle. He's going to try to take off. Now he's going to reverse the grain. He's going to have to cut back the other way back toward the middle. And that was one of the more exciting one-yard pickups you'll ever have. Uh, just, and I, I couldn't quite understand what was going on there in, in Banks's head. I'd love to talk to him about that play because, I mean, you thought out the whole time, and you, that could have been a very uh, uh, designed to be a, a wild one. And it certainly was. Never really fa quite found the hole, though. Not able to find anything going. And the Lions will turn it over on downs. The fourth down. This will be a 24-yard field goal attempt by Lafort. It's through the uprights. 
And Andre LaFork hits the field goal to put Lawrence up for the first time today. 10 to seven the score, 2.16 to go in quarter number two. We'll be back in just a moment on KLWN, depending on it. This is Mike Dever asking for your vote for Lawrence City Commission. I previously served eight years and had the experience to move Lawrence forward. It is clear we have concerns and challenges that require strict and immediate attention. I will invest the time and effort needed to ensure we work towards solutions to serve all of our citizens. For the Lawrence we all love, I'm ready to get to work for you. Thank you for trusting me and voting for Mike Dever. This ad is paid for by Mike Dever for City Commission, Mark Gonzalez, Treasurer. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. Lawrence High 10, Dodge City High School 7. 216 left in quarter number two with Matt Llewellyn. I'm Derek Johnson on a KLWN. We're here at our Hank Booth, presented by Trudy Credit Union. You can get your Chessie Lions Spirit debit card today. Each purchase you make raises money for the schools. So go to trudycu.org forward slash spirit card to learn more. Kickoff for Andre Laforte, who just hit the last field goal. He's been so money on those short kicks this year, whether field goals or PATs. And he's going to boot one that's going to be Unzueta watching it go out of bounds. So solid field position for Dodge City. 2.16 to go in the half with one timeout. I was about to say uh, before we went to break that a wasted opportunity for Lawrence High. <laughs> but it, it wasn't quite wasted. We got three points out of the deal. But uh, but if you're Dodge City, the last two times Lawrence has been to the red zone, just three total points, they've got to be pretty happy with that. Absolutely. I mean, they have – I mean, Lawrence High has not taken the opportunities that their defense has given them. The offense has not – you know, we've, we've gained some yardage, but – Certainly not able to get in the end zone with any consistency tonight, and that has got to change if the Lions are going to be victorious tonight, let alone next week at potentially Derby. First and 10 for Dodge City at the 35-yard line after the kick out of bounds. And Flores comes out, had a really successful passing drive the first drive. He's going to run a reverse. It's going to be flipped, and then a throw by Sheck into the midfield area. Wow. Incomplete. Great breakup by, uh, by Makai Hernandez. Hernandez was right there, saw it coming, but uh, their receiver was wide open, and Hernandez was following that ball and, and fortunately enough able to get over there and cause that incomplete pass. They flipped it to Sheck. He threw downfield for Jonathan Bone, but a bit underthrown, and like you said, the good play defensively. So second down and 10. For Dodge City after pulling out the trick play. Always fun to see a reverse now and again. Demons now will send Bone in motion from right to left. Out of the shotgun, rolling left as Flores throws. It's going to be a high grab made by Okoro, who's lit up. The ball comes out. They're going to say he was down with possession, not a fumble. It'll be third down and short. Well, and I wasn't, I, I was following the quarterback because the quarterback just got lit up right after the throw. Uh, so I did not see how that how that throw went down, but it seemed to me like uh, interesting that they thought it was, he was down. A third down and one for Dodge City. Play right here, minute 45 to go in the quarter. They'll give to the fullback Gonzalez. He's got the first down with a bit of a push and driven back, but with forward progress up to the 47, and they'll move the sticks. But Okoro on that previous catch, 6-3, used all of that to climb the ladder and grab it. And first and 10 now for Dodge City from their own 47. They're not really in much of a hurry right now, though. Clock right. under 130. And I was going to say, say that they're very much in contrast to what the Lions were doing. It finally comes set with a minute 15. Now a late receiver comes onto the field with Okoro. Down to 10 on the play clock. Okoro getting set. They've burned about 30 seconds between this play and the last play. First and 10. Pressure comes from the middle. Throw down field. It's going to be caught on the run by Amaro. And he's inside the 20. Xander Thomas and Kayvon Price help trip him up. But a huge gain for Dodge City with a minute exactly to go in the second quarter. And... and 
Galbraith and Jahir Johnson were right back on the quarterback very, very quick, but that play did not take a lot of time to develop as they uh, really got after it and made the big, huge play there for Dodge City, and they are threatening inside the red zone at, at the, the 19. Yes, after a deep post throw there, Bone will come in motion from right to left. Flores rolling to the left, pressure up the middle, gets hit, throws into the end zone, just overthrown through the middle for Okoro, who peeled behind the defender at the last moment. Second down and 10. 40 seconds left in the quarter, and again, Dodge City has one timeout. And a well-designed play, because it's just, it's just a little bit overthrown, or that would have been six points for Dodge City. Well, Dodge has had 16 of their touchdowns this year come from running the football, six of them throwing the ball. Actually make that seven of them. But here certainly in a passing situation. Shotgun set, Flores will roll to the near side. He's going to throw at the sideline. It's going to be grabbed by Amaro, who had the deep ball grab earlier. He's up to the 11, and it'll be third down and short. Third down and short. Uh, play clock, or clock stops at 35.8. Three yards to get the first down. 11 for the touchdown. And you would think that three yards would be a very, very easy thing as they have not had a problem on short yardage this game. And I should mention uh, their kicker, Ojeda, is 0 for 4 on field goals this year. So this might be four down territory. Third and short. They'll go under center again with Flores. The fullback in there is Gonzalez. And it'll be a give to Gonzalez straight up the line, dragging up to about the eight yard line. I think this is going to be enough. It is. Yeah, First and ten. Clock won't start till the chains are reset. And they might be calling the timeout here. And they will with 26.8 seconds to go in the quarter. They're now out of timeouts. So if Lawrence could get a sack or stop him in play, who knows how far the clock would wind down to. We'll keep it right here. We're about to have our 23rd Street Brewery halftime report. Uh, once we go to the break here, 10 to 7, Lawrence High leading with 31 seconds left as they reset the clock. And now Dodge City is out of timeouts. By the way, over at Free State High School, the Firebirds are winning 28 to 0. And uh, real quick, while we have a moment, we're going to pause 10 seconds for a legal ID. This is LHS football on KLWN. Depend on it. 1320 KLWN Lawrence and FM 1017 K269 GP Lawrence. Depend on it. So again, this is the first meeting between these two. They were supposed to meet each other in the playoffs a few years ago, but after Dodge City beat Topeka 39-0 in 2020, they ended up having to forfeit the game against Lawrence High because of some COVID cases. That would have been the second round of the playoffs. It'll be first down and goal out of the timeout. Again, 31 ticks of the clock left. Dodge City down by three in the second, threatening to either tie or take the lead at the end of the half. Flores has thrown the ball well, and he's going to roll out to the left on this play. Throw to the end zone. Amaro makes the grab, sliding into the sideline of the end zone, and Dodge City reclaims the lead. Just a beautiful, beautifully designed play. Uh, comes straight out, just hugs that... Uh, right the middle of the end zone and he was uh, being trailed by all kinds of lions nobody in front of him and the ball was just thrown perfectly right in front of him able to make the easy grab for the touchdown and they go up 13 to 10 here with the try to make it a four point spread it'll be Ojeda kicking Sheck is the holder it's a low Locked. kick it hit hit the, the hit the upright yeah it is no out. good That'll keep it at a three-point game. 26.2 seconds to go in the second quarter. 13 to 10, Dodge City. We'll take a quick 30-second break on KLWN. Depend on it. And just like that, it all comes down to this. Fourth and goal. Matt, take yourself inside the huddle. What play are you calling? I'm saying, let's go to 23rd Street Brewery. Right now? Yeah. It's the biggest play of the game. No better time than that. There's no better spot to watch football than 23rd Street Brewery. We've got the Lions, the Firebirds, of course the Jayhawks, and all the NFL action. Well, we better get out of here fast to catch the ending of the game. Dibs on the Haney Turkey Stack. That's the 23rd Street Brewery, corner of Clinton Parkway and Castle. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320. KLWN, depend on it. 
There's only 26.2 seconds left in the half, and the Lions now trail 13-10 to, to Dodge City. With Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson on KLWN. And to possibly make matters worse, Dodge City will receive the football in the second half. A chance to maybe double dip. Lions do have one timeout. Ojeda will kick it away. They'll be looking for a good return here. It's going to take a tough bounce and just hanging. It'll go out of bounds. So this could work out for Lawrence. Not a ton of time, but they'll start at the 35. If they can get a couple quick plays, maybe they can work themselves into field goal range. Lafort more of an accurate kicker than one with a big leg, but who knows? Well, they will absolutely uh, uh, be throwing the ball on in, in this situation here. There's no question in my mind uh, that Clint Bowen will will be putting it in the air, and we're going to try to take the lead or tie this game going into halftime. Bowen out of the gun from the right hash at the 35. It'll be a run straight up the middle for Malcolm Paul, who will get dragged down for a gain of five. And Lawrence and my uh, seems content. My streak continues of inaccurately, <laughs> inaccurately guessing what Clint Bowen is going to do as he runs it on that one. But it is a quick hurry up offense here. Seven seconds to go, and are they going to get the snap off? Down to two three, seconds. Two. They will they get do. one final playoff. Bowen will throw a pass. Three man rush. Plenty of time. Unloads it deep downfield into triple coverage, and it'll be incomplete. Nearly intercepted by Unzueta. And the Lions will have some work to do. Dodge City with a three-point edge at halftime. The Demons lead 13 to 10 after the first 24 minutes of play. With Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson. We're going to take a timeout, come back for our halftime show brought to you by 23rd Street Brewery, open daily. You can go on in to try the Bill Suff mac and cheese, the Haney turkey staff, the Herky stack, Haney turkey stack, excuse me. It's a mouthful. My goodness. Well, it's a mouthful. It tastes four, great, four too. Ways Fill up one. your mouth. Hank Boothberger, whatever you want from the 23rd Street Brewery, you can come in to watch the KU game tomorrow. Uh, perfect day to go to the brewery Sunday. Chiefs game at 3, KU basketball game at 5. Watch both at the same time. There you go. Boom. Go to the 23rd Street Brewery, and uh, we'll get to our halftime report after this break in the action on a KLWN. Depend on it. The Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry in Lawrence welcomes Dr. Kelly Dummerth. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Dummerth, and I've recently started at Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry. Currently, what I'm working on bringing into the office is called Lawrence Dental Aesthetics, where we're able to focus on a lot of aesthetic side of smile design and smile redesign, and doing Botox and fillers, smile makeovers, whitening, a bunch of different stuff to really add to our whole smile goals. The Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry. Kind, caring, and understanding when you need it most. Online at KansasCenterForSedationDentistry.com. Life can get busy, and sometimes accidents can happen. Don't let spilling coffee on your nice outfit ruin your week. We have all been there. And guess what? Scotch Cleaners provides the quickest, most convenient dry cleaning service to get you looking brand new again. Looking clean and professional is what matters the most, whether you're in the office or meeting on Zoom. Keep clean even when you have accidents. Protect your wardrobe investment with Scotch Cleaners. Scotch Cleaners Dry Cleaning Service has nine locations around Northeast Kansas, with four locations in Lawrence and five in Topeka. Stop by now. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. Back for a halftime show brought to you by 23rd Street Brewery with Matt Llewellyn. I'm Derek Johnson. And the Lions trail Dodge City 13-10 to at the halftime break. A bit surprisingly over there. Meanwhile, over at Free State, the Firebirds leading 28 to nothing. Uh, some scores from around the state, games that went final yesterday. On the east side of the bracket, the five-seed Blue Valley Northwest took down the 12-seed Olathe Northwest, 48-10. The two-seed Olathe North beat the 15-seed Shawnee Mission West, 56-10. Blue Valley West, who is the seven-seed, beat the 10-seed Shawnee Mission North, 69-35. High score there. Uh, Three-seed Olathe East took down Wyandotte, the 14-seed, 41-6. And uh, those are all the scores from the East. Meanwhile, games that are going on on the West side right now, or I guess combination of the two, Gardner's leading Blue Valley North 31-0, Shawnee Mission East up on Shawnee Mission Northwest 7-3, Olathe South on Shawnee Mission South 14-7, Blue Valley leading Olathe West 14-7. Uh, it is Washburn Rural leading Wichita North 35-0. Junction City ahead of Wichita Heights 7-6, 
Wichita Northwest up 41-0 on Hayesville campus. Manhattan leading Wichita Southeast 38-0. So looks like collision course between Manhattan and Free State. And then Derby leading Topeka 28-0. So uh, Derby would be hosting the winner of this one should that one continue the way that it is going. Uh, so Matt, first half of play. Lions trail by three at the end of it. Thoughts overall on what we saw? Well, uh, exactly what I said needed to happen didn't. I mean, we did not get started off going well, and uh, and it just kind of uh, it was lethargic. I mean, our offense was lethargic. You can't really blame the defense for what happened. I mean, I felt like they did a they did a really good job. Uh, uh, we we have to figure out the short run. Have to I mean, and that's a very to me it was a very very simple fix. When it's an obviously it, it, when it's going to be a run, you've got to make sure that there are no gaps in the line. And uh, and, and there were a lot of gaps in the line at, at that whole. I mean, especially in the second quarter. Uh, and then when they wanted to pass, they had some deep balls. So I think his 41 percent average probably about held up. Uh, as he's, but man, on his passes he connected to, they were big. Yeah, the, I've I've been very impressed by the Dodge City receivers. Amaro and Okoro have uh, really started to kind of dominate and take over this game so far. And uh, obviously Lawrence High gonna need to pick things up in the second half. Dodge City will receive the football to start the second half, so it's gonna be pretty important for the defense to go out there and, and get a stop right well, I mean, away. No momentum on, off, on offense. I mean, right now the the player of the game is Xander Thomas because he recovers the fumble and then. Uh, and then the, the other fumble recovery. Uh, uh, Hayden Reese. Uh, Hayden Reese. So Hayden Reese and Xander, really, Hayden's did not result in, a, in any points for Lawrence High. Xander's uh, resulted in a field goal. But it, it, unimpressive on offense and, uh, and, and, and decent on defense with the, with the two, with the two so one on special teams and one on defense, uh, the turnovers. But the Lions have got some work to do. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what the game plan will be like in the second half, too, offensively. Uh, we, we didn't see a ton of running back runs. It was mostly Banks-Bowen running the football, throwing the ball around to the receivers, and at times it worked. Uh, but, I mean, also it's, you know, a couple drives that got stopped in the red zone. If they get touchdowns on both those drives, it's probably kind of a different conversation. Obviously, you know, it would still be a little closer than you'd want, but um, that's kind of the difference right now. Those two drives that, that stopped in there, whether it was the field goal instead of getting a touchdown or whether it was the uh, drive that stopped on fourth down inside there. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens from here. So but, again, gonna, what, 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 yeah. where would we be without the two turnovers? I mean, <laughs> so let's just think about that. Yeah. I mean, and that, that, those two turnovers were huge. Uh, and you'd think that in a game at home, uh, first playoff game where the Lions should be the favorite, uh, should be the clear favorite, are and they've got two turnovers to no none for um, for Dodge City. You would you would think that the Lions would be ahead by at least a couple touchdowns, wouldn't you? Yeah, but you they're not. Would. We're down by three. Yep. And uh, I guess this is uh, probably a good teaching lesson for Clint Bone. You have a lot of sophomores on the team, a lot of younger players on the team. We know that this Lawrence High team that when they're playing at their A game, when they're playing their ceiling. Right, we saw them beat Free State. We, we've seen them compete with some of the good teams. We've seen them, you know, blow out teams that other good teams have beaten by similar scores. So we know when this team is, you know, firing on all cylinders, they're really tough to beat. They're one of the better teams in the state. But I think when you have a younger team, I think Lou Holtz once said, the uh, famous Notre Dame and, and Arkansas coach once said, um, you know, you don't get to coach the same team every week. <laughs> and sometimes that can happen in college football. You're dealing with 18 to 22-year-olds. Well, Take that to the 10th degree. You're dealing with, you know, 15 to 18-year-olds. You're going to get different performances each and every week. And um, I guess this can be a teaching tool for some of the young players. you got to take every game seriously, and, and you are in the playoffs. You're one bad performance from, you know, falling out. There is no more time to, hey, you can mess around, you lose a game, but you still got games in front of you. That's no more if you lose a game like this. So 13-10, uh, to 10, Lions have their hands full. By the, I yeah, was going to say, Joel did correct me mm -hmm. uh, both both turnovers did result in points. So we were able to, on the muff punt, we were able to get the touchdown on, on, on the muff punt. Uh, thank you again to our producer. We actually have a producer sitting right next to us, Joel Becker. And tonight we've got a cameraman, Ty McClellan, I know. thanks to Ty, doing that, full operation. That, that great, great uh, <laughs> camera work <laughs> outside, freezing. He didn't realize he was going to 
want to come and with me and enjoy the football game and he end up being an outdoor cameraman. Yeah, but see, now what you've done is that if if he misses a play, people know who he is. People know the cameraman who missed the play. They're not going to be happy with it. I, that, that's probably true, but I've seen some of the camera work. Put some extra overall, pressure on him. And overall, it's been really, really good yeah. compared to what we normally have up here. So, uh, so nice, uh, nice work out there by Ty and, and Joel, our producer. So. All right, our insurance uh, partner is Kirk Geeser State Farm. Like a good neighbor, Kirk Geeser State Farm team is there to serve all of your insurance needs. Give Kurt and his team a call today. All right, we're going to take a quick 30-second timeout, and then we're going to have a halftime interview here at Lawrence High School. This is KLWN, depending on it. Trudy Credit Union is a proud supporter of the Lawrence High Lions and all Lawrence Public Schools. We've donated over $61,000 to support our schools and teachers. Get your Chesty Lions Spirit Debit Card today. Each purchase you make with the card raises money for our schools. You swipe, we give. Visit a branch today or online at trudycu.org slash spirit card to learn more. Stand up and cheer for your Lawrence Lions with Truity. Trudy Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. Well, we're back here live in the Hank booth and, and, and joined by Lawrence High and KU legend Todd Leeper Williams. Todd, welcome to the yeah. Hank booth. Thank you, Matt, for having me on. And, uh, well, right now, Lawrence High is down, but I think we're going to come back and beat this team. Uh, well, I always love your opti optimism, one of the most optimistic people yeah. there is. Other than me, I, I, I don't know who's going to be more optimistic, you or me, but but you love your Lions, right. you love your Jayhawks. For those of you who know, don't know, Todd Leeper, the, le the legend, uh, Todd Leeper Williams, featured on ESPN as the greatest KU fan of all time. Uh, yeah. Worked worked for KU 40 years, right? 40 years as the manager in the for the football team. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm starting my 53rd year. I'm still working. And, uh, 53rd year. And 53rd year. Wow. And and you love that job, don't you? Uh, yes, I do. And uh, well, we're going to uh, win tomorrow against Oklahoma. So okay. come out and support the team. You heard it here first from the legend. KU's going to beat Oklahoma tomorrow. Hey, right. I wanted to get you on, Todd, because obviously you're a huge Lion fan. Yes. You're a huge KU fan. Yes. Give me some of your, your favorite Lions of all time. Uh, first, uh, Adam Green. Adam Green. Okay. Uh, also, Great coach right now. but uh, The guys right now, Banks Bones, one of my favorites. Uh, also, uh, Darren Green played here. Darren Green, absolutely. Uh, uh, J.D. Woods. J.D. Woods, uh, a superstar at Baker, broke every conference record yes. there was, uh, and, and, and stud out here. J.D. Woods was so much fun to call at Lawrence High because every time they get the, give him the ball, he'd score a touchdown. It didn't matter if it was from four yards or 40 or 50 or 70 or 80. J.D. Woods had the ball. He was going to score. Uh, then also Dirk Wedd was a player here too. Dirk Wedd, longtime coach, uh, great uh, lineman. Dirk was a lineman. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, and then went on to coach at Wichita, Wichita State. For one year. Then, and, then, then, and then came back here to take over the Lions. That's right. Uh, then um, – uh, John Francis. John Francis, okay. Uh, and, and that's old. Uh, is, is John Francis your age? Yes. And then, okay. And then uh, Mr. McAnderson played here. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Brandon McAnderson. Uh, Coach Devin McAnderson's brother, Brandon, uh, yeah. a sports broadcaster. He's a sideline reporter for KU right now. And then uh, also Jason Thorne. <laughs> oh, Jason Thorne, now at uh, uh, Mississippi State, coaching, yeah. longtime coach at Baker. Right. Uh, and just and did great things here on the football field. Right. Uh, brother to Candy, Candy yeah. Thorne, who Candy right. would tell you she's the more famous one, but she <laughs> loves her brother, Jason. So, but, yeah, so what does the Lions need to do in the second half? I think they're going to have to stop. Uh, you cannot overlook anybody in the Central like Sunflower League, and this team is third, third and five, so we need to get the momentum in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. Abs and we need to stop that running back, right? Right, yes. I mean, it close those holes in the defense. You're a defensive guy, right? Yes. That's your – Yeah. That, that, those are the guys you love. Right. Um, any, any, uh, any of these defenders that you like – 
Who do, who do you like best on the KU team right now? Who are your uh, favorites on well, KU? Well, uh, Kenny Logan for one. Kenny Logan, great player. Uh, Jason Bean's going to have a good game tomorrow. And Jason Bean, he's, he's our starter. J- uh, Jalen Daniels is still out. Is that right? I don't know right at this time. I can't give you any, any, uh, in, any No inside information? No. Okay. Then Devin Neal's going to have a good game. Lawrence High. Devin Neal, Lawrence High product, great, great runner. You know you know that. And, and man, yes. he's making a statement at KU, isn't he? So, uh, uh, so Lor- does Lawrence High get the ball the second half? or They start. They'll get it to start the second half. So, here's where I'm. Lawrence High will win. Then we played might be playing Derby again. Derby is, is winning big currently right now, and so it, it does look – but it's just halftime, but Derby will probably advance, right. as will Manhattan. Manhattan is, is strong right now, and Free State is, is looking like they're going to win too. So, so the, the Lions are the only team that's not holding uh, – Holding. Court, yeah, yeah, court. So <laughs> right. the second half, we need to get the fans out to Morris Stadium to Mars. Also, K Club weekend. K Club weekend. It's a sellout up there, right? Yes. So if you want tickets, you're going to have to call in a favor from somebody. Do you, do you have any extra that you're willing uh, to no, share? I, no. You're looking at your brother, Sean. Sean, do we have any extra tickets that you want to share out there? Is no. That, <laughs> okay. So people, get, get out and support this team. Come up on the hill, tailgate, hang out around the stadium. And, and get there early. To, for Fox uh, Fox for, Noon. Yeah, Fox News is going to be here, so get there early. And what, what time? They, they get there about 9 o'clock? Uh, I think they're already there. The, tr- uh, trucks, the trucks are, are there. So it, uh, Urban Meyer's there, right? Who yeah. else is there from that Fox News oh, show? Uh, make sure you get there early and let's send Oklahoma with a loss. They're, making, they're going to the other conference. All right. Well, let's do it. You heard it here from Todd, Leaper Legend, and you're listening to uh, Lord's High School Football. It's the halftime show brought to you by 23rd Street Brewery. We're going to take a quick little time out. Todd, thank you for joining yeah, no us time. here. And uh, let's go, Lions. You're listening to Lord's High School Football on KLWN 1320. Depend on it. There are a lot of Mexican restaurants that claim to be authentic or think their food tastes that way, but nothing compares to Mama's Tamale Shop. Enjoy artistically prepared tamales, empanadas, and street tacos with your choice of meats and salsas that are prepared fresh to order. Not sure what to order? Mama's will always give you a sample. Relax and enjoy great food and try one of the fresh waters or jaritos on the patio. Authentic Mexican food. Come hungry, leave satisfied. Mama's Tamale Shop, 9th in Louisiana. This is Mike Dever, candidate for Lawrence City Commission. Your vote is extremely important in this current election, and I encourage you to get to the polls. Lawrence now more than ever needs trusted leadership and guidance to ensure we move our city forward through some very challenging times. I will put in the hard work, listen to you, and be a voice of reason for our city. Thank you for making your voice heard and a vote for Mike Dever. This ad is paid for by Mike Dever for City Commission, Mark Gonzalez, Treasurer. Kirk Geeser State Farm Agency understands the importance of being a member in the Lawrence community and supporting local. They also understand the importance of supporting you in Lawrence, whether it's through the peace of mind you get with insurance or helping you with any financial questions or needs. Just like this high school broadcast, Kurt Geeser State Farm Agency will tackle any issues you need covered. Give Kurt and his team a call at 785-843-0003 or visit them online at www.kurtinsures.com. Trudy Credit Union is a proud supporter of the Lawrence High Lions and all Lawrence Public Schools. We've donated over $61,000 to support our schools and teachers. Get your Chesty Lions Spirit debit card today. Each purchase you make with the card raises money for our schools. You swipe, we give. Visit a branch today or online at trudycu.org slash spirit card to learn more. Stand up and cheer for your Lawrence Lions with Truity. Trudy Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. Time doesn't slow down, and you've got so much planned already going on every day. One thing you don't always plan for is surprises, especially an unpleasant one like a car accident. Your mind immediately starts spinning with questions about damages, coverage, injuries to you or the other party, and those questions might be urgent. The Law Office of Sally Kelsey and Lawrence is here to help. Sally Kelsey offers free consultations and has helped people with accidents for over 30 years. Let her help you with your claim and pursue any damages you are entitled to. That's Sally Kelsey, K-E-L-S-E-Y. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. 
We get ready for half number two. Lawrence High trailing Dodge City 13 to 10 would be a bit of an upset right now. This is the 6-11 matchup in the first round of the 6A west side of the bracket in Kansas 6A football. With Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson. So uh, second half of play, Dodge City will receive to start this half of play. Uh, what are you looking for, Matt, on this first drive of the game or the second uh, half? Uh, you know, let's get a couple more turnovers. Uh, something that... that uh, uh, is a little bit harder harder to control than uh, than moving the ball down the field, but those have seemed to be the momentum switcher, and and we're going to need all the momentum we can get here. Uh, nice to, for them to uh, not hit that last field goal, but that or extra point attempt, but that was a little bit of pressure by the Lions special team, so that was that was nice to have. Um, I I want to see us get to the quarterback more. Um, we got really close. Uh, towards the end of the second uh, first half there, but weren't, weren't able really to finish it. And so I want to see that happen, and that's what really has, uh, has led to some great field position for the Lions and, and just our defensive play. Our, I just want our defense to come, in, come up big right now on this series of plays. All right. Love so to see a three and out. It'll be Lawrence High kicking off from left to right. Dodge City will be going right to left in this third quarter, leading 13 to 10. They got on the board first. They forced... Not quite a three and out, one first down, then a three and out after that, and then went down, scored a touchdown. Lawrence Winton responded after a muffed punt recovered by Hayden Reese, and it was a 26-yard rushing touchdown by Banks Bowen. Then it was a fumble recovered by Xander Thomas. LHS got a field goal, and with just 26 seconds left in the first half, Dodge City scored, missed the PAT. They lead 13 to 10 as we begin the third kickoff from Andre Lafort is going to hit inside the 30, bounce around at the 20. It'll be fielded. And taken across the 30 by Bryson Unzueta. So here comes the Dodge City offense. They will run some flex bone, which we've seen, and they've been able to open up some holes at times. But it's really been the big pass plays from Alan Flores to Jaden Amaro and Tochi Okoro that have opened things up and gotten big plays. There was an Alan Flores passing touchdown on the last drive. That went to Amaro. The first touchdown was a rushing score for them and Ryan Gonzalez. And here they come looking to pull this upset again. It looks like the winner of this will be heading on the road to take on the Derby Panthers in the second round of the playoffs next Friday night. So Dodge City comes out. They've had four games scoring 20 or more points. They've twice scored 30 or more points. 13 in the first half as under center is Flores. And he'll take a quick QB sneak and just jet through to the 35. You don't normally see a QB sneak on first and 10. And not like that. It was very, it was, it was very strange. I mean, he was lined up like a normal play, and then just real quick uh, comes right up to the, comes right up, gets the ball quick, and boom. It, it, weird, weird. Well, picked him up three yards. And it'll be second down and seven. So I guess the play clock was winding down. So he was just trying to get a playoff to avoid a delay game, which actually would be a very heady play by the quarterback. Now Flores takes a high snap, looks over the middle, sidewinds it, high grab, bobbled, wow. then caught off the bobble. No, 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 they no, call no, 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 no. Wow, that is a catch great. by Amaro. There's, how can they possibly call the reception at that point in the field? You, you okay, all right. Because he now they're going to change the call. They're going to say incomplete. Okay, or wow. Okay, now I don't understand that either. Okay, they're stopping the clock. Just a, a little confusion on the field, confusion yeah, the by the referees. It seemed talking. to me like it was a catch, but originally it was re it was ruled as a catch right at the first down marker that would have oh, been. Now a they first do down. call it a catch. So that's what this is where it's at. Where I, what I thought it should be. It was a catch at the first down marker, but then he bobbled it and then got it at the forty, which is about two yards behind the the uh, mm -hmm. the, the yard marker. So. That's what we have here, and that's what I thought it should be. So here we go. It was a catch for eight yards, third down, two yards to go. And about three different calls from the yeah. officials on one play. But they, they got it right, that's, uh, as far as I'm concerned. All right, under center, they'll send Howard in motion to give up the middle of the fullback, Gonzalez. He picks up about a yard, but then he's swallowed up. It and looks it, short it, to me. And you know what? It's going to be close, but at least they got it figured out a little bit on the line here. Uh, oh, they are going to, without even measuring, I'll call it a first wow. down. Wow. Okay. And, and at least it, the line gave them a push that time mm -hmm. and, and were able to stop it and contain it uh, to some degree. But 
he does pick up the first down. Debatable, but <laughs> we'll go ahead and give it to him because the refs do. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. Flores out of the gun, will scramble left. Pressure from Galbraith, throws. It's caught, a flag comes out. As Amaro able to hold on across the 45 to the 46. We'll see what the flag is, though, back at the line of scrimmage. And Xander Thomas makes him pay for that. As Xander hits him as soon as he catches the ball and then twists him around and gets him to the ground. A hold is going to be called on Dodge City. So that, that is a nice little break there for the Chesty Lions. Changes what would have been a second down and medium into a first down and 20. Back to their own 32. Dodge City's one and three at home. They've gone two and two on the road, so they actually have been a better road team. Obviously had to make a long drive up here to Lawrence today. But a lot of time to think about this game and think about what they're gonna do, and they look like they've done it so far tonight. Flores will give to Howard running up the right side, and he's blasted after picking up a handful of yards. Xander Thomas. Yeah, I'd say that that's the first Mondi of the night. Nice hit by Xander, and really makes him pay for that couple yards he gets on that play. They give him forward progress to the 36. Picks up four, it's second and 16 for the Dodge City offense. 9.22 to go here in this third quarter. Lions trail 10 to 13, 13-10. Coming out of the gun now will be Flores. Again, it's been Amaro and Okoro who have been the two main targets so far for Dodge City. Rolling left will be Flores. He's going to look downfield for Amaro and makes the toe tap catch. He'll be just short of the first down, but a little corner out into the zone up to the 49, and it'll be third and short. And Tony Jacobson misreads that where that ball's going. He was a little bit ahead of it and thought he might have a chance to knock it down or bat it down, but it was more of a halo throw. So uh, came down right in the hands of the receiver, and Jacobson not able to, to, to make a hit on it. And it was a great job by Amaro to get both feet in bounds, tap him, and then jump out. It's third down and three at the 49 for Dodge City. Out of the gun, they'll send Howard in motion from left to right. And the quarterback, Flores, pressure to the right. He steps into it, takes a hit, throws it into no man's land, and almost caught diving by Howard, but too low, incomplete. Wow. It's fourth and three. A lot of pressure on the quarterback that time by the Lions, and uh, surprised he was even able to get that ball off. He does, and then he, he's got a, a man in coverage that had actually a very decent shot at making that play, but not able to come up with it, bringing up fourth down and three. Offense stays on the field. Dodge City's the underdog here today, playing a long ways on the road. Trying to be the aggressor. Again, I, they would. Well, actually, no, now they will look like they're going to punt it. But I would watch a fake here because they've been Flores able to. Flores is the quarterback and punter. Trying to get the Lions to jump offside. It doesn't happen. He is going to punt the ball. Low snap, low Line ball. drive. Takes a good Dodge City bounce into the Lawrence High. 20-yard line officially at about the 18. But in the end, the Lions defense able to get that first stop of the third quarter. And they get the offense, the ball with 8.46 to go in the third, trailing by three. They reached the red zone a couple of times in the first half. One of their touchdowns, they actually never got in the red zone. But the other two times they did reach it, they wound up with three total points. One time being stopped, one time held to a field goal. Bowen will take a snap a bit low left, throws quickly off the fingertips of Mosman wow. incomplete. And very fortunate that ball wasn't uh, picked off after the initial tip by Mosman. Popped in the air, Aguilera had a shot at maybe picking it off. Instead, it's second and 10. Bowen will be out of the gun from the right hash. Jacobson is his running back. Jacobson running back duties all night long so far. Gets the call up the middle and drags his way to about the 21 as Asa Moreno on the tackle. You don't often see many D tackles like Asa Moreno. Five foot six, 195 pounds, but he is holding up inside there. Third down and six for the Lions. Three receivers left, one to the right. Jacobson stays in and running back to the right hip of Bowen. Takes the snap, three-man rush, plenty of time. Throws downfield over the middle. Caught for a first down and more. And the Lions will move the chains up to about the 45. Gabe Wingard. 
Gabe Winger at that time able to make the connection uh, right up the field, un uncontested, no one around him, and able to pick up a, a, a bunch of yards there to give the Lawrence the first Lawrence High the first down. 20-yard pickup on the play for Gabe Winger. Quick play, snap goes to Malcolm Paul after the handoff, and Paul will power his way up into Dodge City territory at the 47. Handoff goes to number five, Malcolm Paul. And an injured line on the play, I believe. It, it is, is Malcolm Paul. Paul. Oh, boy. Looks to be... Maybe holding a leg. He's holding his leg, but to some degree in the fetal position on the field, and so maybe better... Trainers are out. Coaches are coming out. So you hope Malcolm Paul okay. Obviously, this was a three-headed monster running back for Lawrence High with Paul Edwards and Jacobson. Jacobson has been the main guy today. Edwards, of course, with the broken foot and you could ill afford another injury to that position here with Paul. We're going to take a 30-second break while they attend to the injured player. 7.41 to go in the third quarter. Dodge City 13, Lawrence High 10 on KLWN. Depend on it. Pearson Collision Repair has an award-winning team that makes the auto collision repair craft like fine art. With awesome pay, paid holidays, and weekends off, Pearson Collision Repair strives to hire only the best, and they want you to apply. Pearson is looking to add to their team of craftsmen. Committed to excellence? Want career growth in a fun place where quality is rewarded? Come join the award-winning team at Pearson Collision Repair. Take your excellence where it's appreciated. Go to the Pearson Collision Repair page on Facebook and apply today. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320. KLWN, depend on it. Malcolm Paul helped off the field as LHS awaits a second down and four yards to go. Right, second and three, 739 in the third. Malowell and Derek Johnson on KLWN. It'll be a give. Actually, Bowen the fake, then pulls it, gives it off. It's Jackson thrown Becker. caught by Jackson Becker, and he's tripped up just inside the 20 on the tackle by Tochi Okoro. And great, great pickup by Jackson, just like glue, but it was a great thrown ball. Uh, a, a, a defender right behind Jackson, uh, Jackson Becker and able to pull him down, but not before a nice 20-yard gain. Bowen, speed option to the left side, keeps it himself, out to the 15, gets a big block up to the 10, cuts in at the five, and he's gonna find his way in, but there is a flag. I think this is gonna be a hold by one of the receivers on the flank for LHS, and it is gonna bring it back. But the flag was thrown way upfield. It might not cost the Lions that much, but let's see what happens here. Yeah, it is a hold. I, I think you're right. It's, it's going to be on uh, one of the receivers blocking up to the left. Looks like he hooked one of the players. So the good news is it'll be spot of the foul, which means it won't be quite first and 20. It's going to instead be about first and 14. First and 14 from the 24. And from the 24-yard line. Becker is the lone receiver at the near sideline. They've got Wyatt Hendricks in as an extra tight end right now. Owen takes a head high snap. Darts out to the right side, keeping his eyes downfield. Pointing out, now cuts back. He'll keep it himself up to the 25, and he'll hesitate out of bounds at the 22. Bring up second down. So picks up three yards on that play. Gets back some of the yards lost. Uh, Second down and 12 to go here. LHS offense has scored 30 or more points, six of their eight games, 40 or more three times, but just 10 points in the first half here tonight. Bowen will scramble out to the left on the quarterback play. He gets nailed as he throws to the corner, just incomplete off the hands of Mason Moseman. Wow, and you th would think that Mason maybe got hit a little bit early, but the referee doesn't see it that way. Mason unable to make that grab and bring it in. That would have been six points. And Bowen got absolutely tattooed on the throw. He's a little shaken up, but seems to be okay. So Dodge City is bent but not broken for the most part tonight, and they've got a chance to do that again right here on a third down and 12. LHS at the Demons' 22-yard line. 6.50 to go in the third quarter. Play clock was down to 10. LHS is going to exhaust the timeout. We'll keep it right here. Our... Insurance sponsor, Kirk Easter State Farm in Lawrence. Like a good neighbor, Kirk Easter State Farm team is there to serve all of your insurance needs. Give Kurt and his team a call today. 
So how are you approaching this, Matt? Third down and 12. Are you trying to get some back and make it a fourth and short? Are you going for the whole thing? What are you doing? You, you, I mean, at this point, I'd, be, I'd count on the guys in the booth and, and to tell Coach Bowen what they think is going to be the best play. And I... You know, the thing that have been has always been the most successful is the short yardage passes for the Lions in, in previous games. Just the straight up the middle, just little little hitch and roll pass, and, and they have the ability to do that. And you get a couple guys down there right about the first down marker. I, I, I mean, that's what I would go for here at this point in time. It's third down and 12. That was the first time out used by either team in the second half. LHS on the right hash. They've got to get up to the 10-yard line. It'll be Bowen play faking to Jacobson. Throws a fade route to the right side for Becker, and it's incomplete. Knocked yep. away by Okoro. Just a perfect defensive coverage by Okoro, Okoro uh, right behind Becker and able to make the to, to bat that ball down in the end zone. And again, uh, to me, that would have been that was a little aggressive. I would not have gone for the home run on that right then and there. And that's gonna bring up fourth down, and of course they're gonna go for it. Yeah, fourth down and 12, a bit out of field goal range here. Of course, they are down three, but this is too far out of range. They've got three receivers to the left, none to the right. Play fake to Jacobson, three-man rush. Bowen unleashes to the end zone for Moseman. Jump ball incomplete. Knocked away by Bryson Unzueta. And the, 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 their defense, has, their secondary has just been too good. I mean, their secondary has been all over our receivers with deep thrown balls. And I just, I, it, it's been a little, a little frustrating. It's gotta be frustrating for Banks Bowen. Um, it's not like he, he's, he's making good throws, but the defense is all over it. Well, 6.37 to go in the third. So that is the, I guess, third drive that either got stopped in or just outside of the red zone for Lawrence High without a touchdown. One of them, they got a field goal, the other two without any points. And again, the defense has got to come up big for Lawrence High, and this defense, I, I'd say they can do it. First down and 10 for Flores under center. He'll take a straight drop back, throw quickly to the right side, and it's intercepted. intercepted. Josh Galbraith. Come up Josh with the Josh Galbraith, the sophomore, comes up huge with the interception. Just like that, the defense comes up big. Lions have got another shot at it. So first and 10 for Sorry, if that, if that was Hank Booth, we'd have a dislocated shoulder in our hands right now. Derek is a little bit more stout than Hank was, and Derek able to take the, 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 the shoulder hit by Matt Llewellyn. Good job, buddy. We're good. We're good. All right, first and 10 for LHS. New set of downs at the 32-yard line. And by the way, update from Free State High School where it is 35-0 Firebirds. So 6.31 to go in the third. Lions down three with the football. Bowen. And at quarterback once again. He's going to fake to Jacobson. Keep to the left side. He's strung to the sideline and just goes down on his own. It was a well-played ball by Ty Sheck, the rover, who contained him out there, and it's a loss of a yard. Make it actually two. Again, Dodge City at this area of the field around the 20 to 25, 30 yard line, they've been stellar defensively. See if they can keep that going here on second down and 12. Bowen out of the pistol. Fakes to Jacobson, throws a dart over the middle. It's caught for a first down and more. Running into the end zone, touchdown, Gabe Wingard. And that is what I'm talking about. The short, medium pass right over the middle. Let your, let your wide receivers make plays, and that's exactly what he did. He was wide open, straight over the shot, 10-yard pickup, easy first down, but what does Gabe Winger do? Boom, misses a couple, couple <laughs> downfield blockers and gets in for the touchdown. Lions go ahead, 16-13, here's the kick. Good snap, good hold. The kick looks wide left, and it is. So both teams have missed a PAT, but Lawrence does take the lead on the touchdown pass from Banks Bowen to Gabe Wingard, a couple of juniors pairing up. It's 16-13 Lions, 5.54 in the third. We'll take a break. This is KLWN, depend on it. Hi, this is Andy Sherman, and I start my weekday mornings at 8 a.m. with According to the Record with Kim Murphy. 
a cup of coffee is great, but you're really not awake until you find out what's going on in the community in Douglas County. And this gift for you every day is free just by listening in to FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. I got a new ball game now and big interception by Josh Galbraith. Lawrence High is plus three in turnovers now. That led to a touchdown. So all 16 of Lawrence High's points today have come off turnovers. There was a fumble recovery by Hayden Reese. Eventual touchdown after that. There was a fumble recovery by Xander Thomas. Field goal after that, and then the pick just there by Galbraith led to the touchdown from Bowen to Wingard. 16-13, 5.54 in the third with Matt Llewellyn. I'm Derek Johnson on KLWN and Andre LaFort. Rare missed PAT for him. will kick the ball away. He'll take a bounce at the 30 and be fielded just inside the 25 as Dodge will bring it up to about the 33. And you would think that that would be the momentum that now we would need to go ahead and just start trying to take it over this game, but it, it absolutely hasn't happened to this point. I mean, you can't say that now. Uh, all, all of Lions points have come off turnovers. Um, at, and really, at this point in time, you give the defense the star of the game because that's what's kept us in the game. Quick fullback run up the middle, running hard. Gonzalez dragging a defender for about nine yards. And that being said, exactly. And now a flag comes out late. And that, that could be a personal foul on Dodge City because as there is a, like the, uh, and it could ac actually check that. It might be on Lawrence High. Let's see what the white hat calls. But it was absolutely well after the play was called. It's going to be called against the offensive line for Dodge City. It's on Neri Quinones. So that changes it, things. Yeah, quite a bit. So, See, that's, that's quite big that he was stopped short of the first down. Unless they gave it to him. Yeah, it should be second down. So second and 16. If he would have just got one more yard, they'd just have a new first down. But instead, it's second down, although the chain marker still has it on a one. So I'm wondering on there, is they're going to have the quarterback keep it and hit hard as Flores, nowhere to go, only a couple yards on the pickup. Yeah, on the keeper. Uh, uh, on the far side, it says one. On our side, it says three. Or, excuse me, it had one. Now it says two. It's three here, but it's actually third down. I, I believe the marker on this side yep. of the field is accurate. Clint Bowen just signaled a three to the official and said, is it third down? And the official went, shook his head and yes. held up the number three. And, so. the, and the scoreboard says three. Third down, 13. Lines up 16 13, 450, and the clock is running. They're at their own 31 yard line in motion. Goes Howard, dropping back is Flores, throws it off his back foot Got up for man. grabs, and it's incomplete. Wow. And had a. Had, uh, There's a Morrow. And had uh, uh, Jalen Parks looked around, would have seen that duck go up in the air, and he would have had it. But in this situation, fourth down and 13, looks like Dodge City is going to punt again. Uh, to Jackson Becker deep for the Lions. Lions are going to have a chance to get it back and do something here on offense without getting the ball benefit of a turnover. And his head coach, Clint Bowen, came sprinting back to where he was and said, move up a little bit. Punt has gotten away, and Becker will field at the 35-yard line. Slips one at the 37, and he gets hit hard but stays up at the 40, spinning around, and he's tripped up across the 45. Wow, how did he get up? He was down at the 40, and, but he just stayed on his feet and was able to get another six yards. Jackson Becker showing us some uh, uh, wheels along with those glue-like hands. <laughs> 4.33 to go in the third quarter. And 16-13 the score. Another update over at Free State High School where they're leading 42-0 into the fourth quarter. So LHS, big opportunity here to get the first two possession lead that either team has had today. If they can go down and get a touchdown. First and 10 from their own 46, good field position. Give up the middle to Tony Jacobs and hurdles <laughs> the line. Stays up, but he lost the football, and Dodge City picks it up. 
He hurtled the line of scrimmage, which was knocked down, and after he was hit coming down in the air, the ball came out. And the Demons officially have it. It's Ty Sheck on the recovery for Dodge City. Wow. And you, just about getting ready to, to expl just exclaim about Tony Jacobson's running there, and the ball comes out, and uh, uh, Lions turn the ball over right away. So offense comes up empty in another situation. So can the defense answer that and get the momentum back our way? Our first turnover of the game. First one. And that is just the seventh turnover all year for the Lawrence offense. First and 10, Dodge City has it at their own 49-yard line. New set of downs for Alan Flores and the Dodge City offense. It's going to be a gift to Gonzalez cut down immediately. Well, now you like that play uh, uh, with Connor Nowak coming up. Maybe Connor anticipating in the run that time and able to get up there quickly. So it's just a one-yard gain on what normally, I mean, this... That play has been able to gain them three yards every single time they've run it at least. Three, Last four week, and five yards. Dodge City put up 41 points a week ago. That was the most they've scored, so they come into this one with a good amount of momentum. Their previous best was the 35 against Junction City. Dropping back is Flores out of the gun. Throw over the middle. Dangerous pass is somehow caught as the receiver sandwiched but held on. Xander, Xander Thomas, Thomas puts on another Mondi. I mean, he stops him right in his tracks as soon as he caught that ball. But a, but a nice little uh, seven-yard pickup. That's going to bring up third down and two. It was Okoro making another contested grab. Him and Amaro continue to do that. Third down and two for Dodge City. Under three and a half to go in the third quarter. They have it from the right hash. They're on a cold night at the end of October. It'll be under center in the flex bone. Tight end at the right of the formation is Kisner. And the play clock down to eight. Dodge is going to burn a timeout. So both teams will have two remaining. 3.09 to go in the third quarter. Lions lead 16 to 13. And we'll keep it right here. As LHS with a big defensive possession right here to try to get the ball back after the turnover from the offense. Yeah, third down and two. You. you almost think that they're giving this a, us a gift by calling this timeout because I, I, I love Banks, Banks the opportunity for, uh, for Coach Bowen to uh, rally the troops and rethink what they might be doing and trying to counter attack their moves. And for Dodge City after getting the turnover, trailing by three or the underdog, I gotta think this is four down territory. Obviously, it depends what happens here on third down. If you get sacked or something, that could change the precipice, but could be two downs. He had two yards. See the LHS defense can pull out of their hat here. A big third down, but you think, though, that this would be, again, this would be four down territory, and if you just run it up the, up the middle twice, their odds are pretty good of making that first down. Flores will be under center. He's trying to hard count, and he's going to give it to the fullback Barnett. Bit of a low handoff, Dang. and he's swallowed up at the line of scrimmage and pushed back. That's exactly that's, that's what I anticipated, and that's how they, they played it. That's how the defense played it. A run straight up the middle, but not able to get a lick. And actually, as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, he was pushed way back. So that's the kind of stop they need. Fourth down and two, no gain on the play. They, they credit Ben Marker on the tackle, but I tell you what, that was the whole defensive line <laughs> effort as well as all the linebackers. I mean, they, they saw that coming and they knew what was happening and they stopped it. Give coaches the credit on that as, as well. Fourth down and two. Offense stays on the field. They're at the 43. Line to gain is up at the LHS 41-yard line. Flores is under center. Gonzalez back in at fullback. Gets the carry up the middle. He's tripped up, and it's, it's going to be, be right there. And this is going to all depend on the spot. Wow, and looking at it, it looks like Gonzalez at the end of the dog pile leaked forward past the 41, and that's going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, and it would, would have been great to be, get down there on the field. I don't see the Lions complaining much, and you would have thought that Clint would have, would have maybe had a word to say, and I'm going to keep an eye on him, but it doesn't, he didn't say one word to the referees. Therefore, Clint agrees with the call, and uh, <laughs> I guess I'll have to agree with it as well. 
The last playoff win for Dodge City, you have to go back to 2020 when they beat Topeka 39-0 and then had to forfeit the next weekend's LHS due to COVID. They're going to give it to one of the wingbacks running from the right side through the middle. He gets to the 36. So that time they come off a little to a little bit to this side of the field and able to make uh, some, some good progress. I don't know if Lions were thinking run on that play or not, but able to get it. Uh, nice five-yard run for Dodge City on that one. Aguilera on the run. I think Thomas had the tackle. Second down and five to the 36. Under a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Flores second on the team in carries and rushing yards. Under center he goes. He's going to pitch it to Gonzalez running right side. Slips by one, lowers a shoulder, and falls toward the sticks. He'll get the first down up to the 30. In fact, and maybe even inside of it. And Galbraith had a shot at him prior to uh, him uh, crossing the, the first down marker, but unable to get to him as he was chasing him. We're under a minute to go in the quarter. By the way, uh, LHS has only given up 20 points in the fourth quarter, which is upcoming here. That is the lowest amount of points they've given up in any quarter. So they've been stellar in the final quarter. First down and 10 here for Dodge City. Give to Gonzalez up the middle, running through the gut and up to the 25-yard line before being cut down. I think Galbraith, Xander Thomas, and looks like also maybe Jalen Parks in on the tackle. So second and six. That can be the last play if they want it of the quarter. And it looks like Dodge City, their coaching staff, going to start walking down to the other end of the field. So that's indeed what it will be. An exciting finish coming at you here in the first round of the Kansas 6A playoffs between Lawrence High and Dodge City High School. The Lions leading 16-13 to after three. One quarter to go. Who will move on? Whose season will continue? We'll find out next. With Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson. You're listening to LHS Football on KLWN. Depend on it. Hello. Please press three for carpet cleaning. Hello. Please press three. Hello. Please press three for carpet cleaning. I just want to talk to a person. Don't waste your time on an annoying answering machine to get your carpet cleaned. Call Rainbow Restoration and speak to a real human. Rainbow Restoration is locally owned with over 20 years of experience. Give their real people a call today at 785-371-2400. And if you mention Free State or Lawrence High Football, get a special deal on your carpet cleaning. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320, KLWN. Depend on it. Here at the Hank Booth, thank you to our sponsors, 23rd Street Brewery, Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry, Mama's Tamale Shop, Kirk Easter State Farm, and Trudy Credit Union. Lions leading the Dodge City Demons 16-13 as we enter the fourth quarter, but Dodge is driving at the LHS 25 with a second down and six. Under center is Alan Flores. His fullback is Cade Barnett, and he'll give to Barnett running up the left side. He'll just leave his head lowered and works his way up to about the 20, where it'll be third and short. And the last play, uh, three plays have been directed that way, and that's Connor Nowak's way. And uh, normally you would think that that will not be that successful, but they have been in that situation. Third down and we're going to call it about uh, <laughs> it, the, two the, feet maybe. Well, the yard marker keeps on kind of moving, so <laughs> it's hard to quite tell. But yeah, about two feet. Let's see if they call that same play again. They like to do the same thing over and over. Got no, the two other fullbacks. It's Gonzalez this time, and he gets the first down for about three or four. They yeah. ran kind of a go, counter play. Yeah, go to the other side yeah. this time, and uh, and it works for the first down. And the clock will be running as soon as they set these chains. Up to the 16-yard line. Dodge City began playing football as a program in the early 1900s. They made state in 1985. They lost to Shawnee Mission West 24-0. That's the furthest they've ever been. Late sub out for LHS. Flores under center on the first and 10. Gives the Gonzalez again up the middle, and he burrows forward one more time to about the 12. Gain of four. He just runs so low. Yeah. He, he, he can't help but to pick up a few yards, and he does on that one. Picks up three and a half. And second down and six now. They've 
really gone after the running game here. They'll do it again. Gonzalez this time running left and up the middle, lowers his shoulder, then pushes the pile up to the first down marker at the seven. And the Lions going for that ball. Let's see if they, he has enough for the first down. It's going to be close. Nope, he does not. Just short. Third down and one. Coming up on 10 minutes to play here in this game. Tight, tight game the whole whole entire time. T Lions lead it right now 16 to three, but Dodge City is seven on the seven yard line and goal. Give to Barnett, he gets the first down and then he's stuck back, but Ford Progress will have him to about the five and they'll move the chains. Neither team has led by more than one score. In fact, the biggest lead of the game has been seven. That was when it was seven nothing Dodge City. Since that point, neither team has led by more than three. First down and goal at the five for Flores in the Dodge City offense. Gonzalez back in at fullback. There's two receivers to the near side, one out to the left. I give to Gonzalez up the middle, and he's cut down right away. One of the Lions came jumping in. That might have been Noah Richardson, the safety, who just came right in and basically, I think maybe even Larney Finney, and just immediately tried to cut out the legs of the running back and flipped him up. Yeah, and, and Kim Allen was at the bottom of that pile, and you knew Kim got that first hit on, <laughs> on him when he came in. A second and goal from the four. Or a couple plays from getting there, but it certainly would be an interesting decision for Dodge City if this does go to fourth and goal. Down by three, do you take the field goal? Do you go for the TD? We'll see. Barnett, the fullback. Play stopped for a whistle. Timeout. Lawrence High. And Clint is not happy. Whatever was going on out there, Clint's not happy with it. And it, the last couple plays have been really nice little plays by the Lions. It's not like they've given up any big plays. I'll keep it right here. A pretty important second and goal upcoming. 8.53 to go. Lions lead 16 to 13 over the Demons. And now just one timeout left for the Lions. That could come into play down the road. We'll see if that. But Clint, very adam animated down there in the huddle. By the way, Derby is up 56 to nothing on Topeka. So pretty much all but set in stone. The winner of this will head to Derby next week. As the huddle breaks up there, Clint goes to the sidelines and the guys go back out on the field. Let's see if his uh, animation will pay off right here. Second and goal from the four yard line. Barnett, the fullback behind Flores. It's been Barnett and Gonzalez rotating in at that key position for this offense. Ball. Fumbled snap, but he got back to it. Then he dives forward on the QB sneak basically. And he works his way for about two yards. Averted disaster there for Dodge City. Yes. As Flores, that would, that would have been good for us. Well, had the snap kind of go through his arms. It popped in the air. He somehow caught it and then ran forward for about two yards. And it's third and goal at the two. And they're certainly uh, doing everything they can here to keep them out of the end zone. Line up in that kind of flex bone offense. And a QB sneak. For Flores, he driving, not he's get it back. Does not get it, and they're not going to give him much, if any. Josh Galbraith and Ben Marker, Larney Finney all combined. He's to the one. It's fourth and goal. Decision time for Dodge, under eight to go. It is, looks like, are they calling a timeout, or are they 29 seconds? The play clock is running. They will use they a timeout. Will, you will use a timeout here. So that's going to be their second timeout, I believe, or is that their, just their first? That is their second used. So both teams will have one remaining. And this is the big one, fourth and goal from the one yard line for Dodge City to go up. Yeah, and I guess they, they could kick the field goal to tie, but I mean, all the way down here at the one, it I, as I, underdog, I, I, you gotta I, go I, for this. I don't see that happening. No, I, you, I agree. They, they would have to go for it. I think maybe a different conversation if you were at the six or seven, eight yard line, but uh, this, especially too, because if you get stopped, the other team, you could possibly get a safety, get the ball back. Right. So, uh, Lions are coming back on the field here. No obvious, li obvious looks by the coaches coming off the field. By the way, the down linemen coming out there, it's Foster, Nelson, and Kem Allen 
The front three players for LHS and Dodge City bringing out the offense. Fourth and goal at the one yard line, 7.51 to go. Lions looking to preserve a three point lead. Flores under center with Barnett, the fullback behind him. One goes in motion. It'll be a fake. It'll be a throw to the end zone. It's knocked Got back down. to him. He catches it. He's being hit. Yes! He's knocked away. Down he goes, and the Lions get the stop. And who was that who got in there and got the stop? Ben Marker. Ben Marker comes up, and that as, as that ball is batted away, qu quarterback grabs it, and you think, oh, my God, he's got a chance. He's going to come around to the near side and go through. But Ben Marker grabs him from behind and pulls him down. Lions take over on downs at the five-yard line. Well, and he would have been better off purposely dropping that because the Lions would have been back at the one-yard line. I mean, yeah. In his head, it probably happened no, so fast. No, of course you not. Know. You're going you're to go for that every day. Here yeah. we go. Lions got it. 745, up by three. Bowen out of the pistol. He'll give to the running back with Jacobson running to the right side. Good push out there and finally tripped up across the 10. So a five-yard line, 95 yards to go here. And Jacobson gets the first seven of that. Oh, a second down and short. A little over seven minutes to go. And now Dodge City only has one timeout as Lawrence try to bleed the clock. So plenty of time though. Jacobson running right side. Cut down as he tries to mini jump to that sideline and it'll be third and short. So Jacobson after the fumble on the last series of downs to give uh, Dodge City a chance to go ahead. Our Lions defense stops him at the one yard line and love the fact that Clint gives Jacobson the ball on the first two carries here. Say, it's okay, kid. You brought us here all year long. You've been Mr. Dependable defense and offense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you, keep you getting the ball. Picks up nine yards on the first two carries. They give it to Jacobson him left. He's again. hit behind the line, though, and he's not going to get the first down. Wow. Dodge City holds him as a big play by Asa Moreno. Yeah, and, and kind of a weird-looking play. you think uh, almost that Banks was going to, wow, and they're giving it back. They're going to punt. Well, you've got to punt in that situation. <laughs> I just think that Clint's so such, backed a, up, yeah. such a gambler. But, yep, they are going to punt. That's stopped right at the line of scrimmage. But he got the handoff way far back. It, it's a crazy play. Good Here's snap to Lafort who gets off a low one. It'll bounce. And take a good LHS bounce all the way inside the 35 for Dodge City. Finally touched at the 32-yard line. So he punted that from the 15-yard line. That would make that for over a 50-yard punt by Andre Lafort. Yeah. 53 yards on the punt by Lafort. It's a great punt there to flip the field position. 5.57 to go. 16-13. Lions in front. Dodge City with the ball. And once again, defense on, on the field, and defense is gotta, gonna have to come up big. Either a stop or a turnover, another turnover, as they have, the defense has certainly done their job tonight. Flores will be out of the gun. Two receivers to each side, and the fullback, Gonzalez, in is a running back. Flores tucks it down. He's hit by Foster, gets away from it. Now scrambling left, throws it downfield and out of bounds. And I was going to say, if he got out of that and able to make the catch, that was just a miracle because Foster was all over him in the backfield. Uh, but how Foster lets him get, so get away from him, he's kicking himself right now as that young sophomore. He had his jersey, just couldn't drag him down. So it's second down and 10. Because he would have lost, how many yards would he have lost on that? If he was way back at the 20, that would have been well over a 12-yard loss. Well, Dodge City looking to strike late here. Obviously with just 5.49 to go and just one time out. Running out of chances. LHS defense looking to hold strong one more time. Flores will roll out to the right. Big hit coming, he evades it, throws it downfield. Open is Okoro, he dropped the wow. ball. He dropped it at the 35, wow. he was behind the defense. That was a gift because Okoro was gonna score on what would have been a 70, 68 yard touchdown strike. And that ball, you could do not ask for a better thrown ball than that right on the money. And it was just absolutely a drop. That kid is gonna be hurting tomorrow. Third down and 10, he's made so right great, now. so many great plays today, but that one, he'll be kicking himself. 
He was, and, and it's not that he wasn't wide open, but there was no way that he was. He caught that ball. It would have been in stride, and he would have had six points. Third down and ten for the Demons offense. LHS going to use a timeout. Their final one of the game. We're going to take a 30-second break with them. 16-13 Lions looking to hold on on KLWN. Depend on it. This is Mike Dever asking for your vote for Lawrence City Commission. I previously served eight years and had the experience to move Lawrence forward. It is clear we have concerns and challenges that require strict and immediate attention. I will invest the time and effort needed to ensure we work towards solutions to serve all of our citizens. For the Lawrence we all love, I'm ready to get to work for you. Thank you for trusting me and voting for Mike Dever. This ad is paid for by Mike Dever for City Commission, Mark Gonzalez, Treasurer. 1320 KLWN Lawrence and FM 1017 K269GP Lawrence. Depend on it. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. 5.43 to go in the fourth quarter. Lawrence High 16, Dodge City 13, and it's third down and 10 for the Demons coming out of the break. As LHS is all out of timeouts, Dodge City with one remaining. With Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson on KLWN. And a third and 10 at the 32-yard line. Flores will be out of the gun, takes a chest-high snap, throws it deep, and it's going to be grabbed this time by Okoro who works across into LHS territory. So Okoro, who dropped the deep ball that seemingly would have been a long ball touchdown, ends up redeeming himself and making a deep catch here to move the, the sticks. But again, Okoro, wide open, and, and you love the call of Dodge City to go right back to that young man because that was a big first, first down pickup, 20 yards uh, for Okoro. And you got to think that the Lions want to keep an eye on that guy now and make sure he does not make another big play like that on him or it's going to be a tough, tough game as Dodge City now in Lions territory at the 47-yard line. Five and a half to play. It's a tight formation with just one receiver to the outside for Flores. He'll drop back and roll out to the right. Pressure comes. He gets by one, steps into the pocket, gets by another, and he's dragged down by the legs after getting past the line of scrimmage. I believe it's Connor Nowak, but a gain of about three or four. Yeah, it was Connor no Nowak who ends up making the play, but there was just a gang of, of black shirts in that in that secondary, or excuse me, in that backfield for Dodge City, and uh, and that quarterback, Flores, able to to get away from all of them and actually pick up two yards on what should have been a five yard sack. By the way, some weird stuff happening over at Free State High School. They were once up forty two to nothing. It's now forty two to twenty one there in the fourth quarter. Second down and seven here for Dodge City from the LHS 44, right in the middle of the field. Man goes in motion, Flores gonna drop back, throws over the middle, it's gonna be grabbed by Amaro and he'll slide forward at about the 31, another first down for the Demons. And Jahir Jahir Johnson able to get in the backfield and make a nice little hit on uh, Flores right as he throws that ball, but not enough to make a difference as they pick up the first down up to the 32 yard line. And these red demons are driving. 4.26 left to go in this game. Demons trail by three. Give up the middle to Gonzalez. Immediately knocked down. He does fall forward to the 31. Only a gain of a yard. And hopefully the Lions have figured out this short run package there by the, uh, the red demons as they only pick up a yard there. Whereas earlier in the game, that would have been good for three or four. Well, second and nine. At this point, this is all four down territory for Dodge City, so LHS gonna need to stop. Of course, one obstacle to that would be if they kick a field goal, but I've mentioned before, they're 0 for 4 on field goals this year. Flores out of the gun. LHS throws a blitz, he scrambles left. He throws it up in the air, it's incomplete. It was bobbled, oh. he threw it up, and that's gonna actually cost Lawrence High because if that ball would have just oh. gone straight to the turf instead of being tipped, it would have probably been intentional grounding. He somehow got it out as he's being spun to the ground, I believe, by Galbraith. And it'll just be incomplete. It's third and nine. Wow. Wow. I mean, and, and great, great play by Galbraith to get back there and have the, I mean, it was going to be a big quarterback sack, able to get the ball up, tip, an incomplete pass. How that ball, I, I didn't see it hit the turf, but I'm not on the field, but that's the call. Third down and nine to go here. 
from the 31. They've got to get to the 22. Dropping back is Flores. He scrambles out to the left, resets, throws oh. in the middle, and it's caught for a first down. No, they say it hit the ground. It hit the turf. It was trapped by and the intended receiver, Gabriel Aguilera. And Flores felt that one. Josh Galbraith just lays the wood to him right as he throws the football. Connor Nowak also coming on strong, but it was Galbraith who got to him. Fourth down and nine now. And Dodge Clock City stop. 335. Has to go for this. 335. If the Lions make a stop, they basically have to get probably one first down. Just depends how some of the stuff works out with how many plays it would take. But this could be the game. And Dodge City does have one timeout left. We have none. Fourth down and nine. At the LHS 31, out of the gun for Flores from the right hash. He'll drop back, pressure comes from LHS. He gets hit, he just chucks it up off his back foot. Running back to the ball, Amoro makes the catch. And he's got a first down at the 10 yard line. Wow, wow, what a, what a throw, what a catch. And he was, Flores was on his back again. But, <laughs> wow. Well, this is where the Lions have been tough all night long. This Lions defense right in inside the 10 yard line. 3.27 to go, first and goal for the Demons. They just threw it up off his back foot. He just figured it was fourth down, had to give him the chance, and Amaro came back to the ball and made the play. Give up the middle to Gonzalez running left, and he's going to be knocked down quickly. Xander Thomas, gain of about two or three. It's second and goal. And that ball was right at the 10-yard line, so ball now at the... Well, the stick says the eight. The ball looks like it's closer to the seven. Well, this, again, could be a similar situation to where we were last time. They got stopped on a fourth and goal the last time out. Flores will pitch it. This is going to be Barnett running to the left sideline. Lowers his shoulder at the five. Dives to the pylon. He's going to be out of bounds at the one. Out of bounds at the one, right where he was the last time. They faced a third down and one. So they'll have two chances to get it in from the one yard line. And as that play was developing, Clint was saying, get, for, get to the far side of the field, get to the far side of the field. And a couple of the Lions defenders in the backfield were not reading his call. Clint had called it right. Had they been reading it better, they might have not gotten that many yards. But here we go, third down and, third down and goal from the one. 2.46 to go, under center is Flores. QB sneak up the gut. He falls and he's in for a touchdown and Dodge takes the lead. And the defense just, you know, there's just so much, so many times they can stop him from the one yard line. Uh, and it's not able to do it. I mean, in, uh, play had been effective all night long and one yard is not a very long way for a big man to go straight up the gut and when he's got some pretty good blockers. Sheck is the holder. Long snappers Easton Smith. Good snap, good hold. The PAT by Ojeda is through and that takes LHS out of being a field goal away. It is 20 to 16 and this is where the Lions using their timeouts could come back to haunt them. They have no timeouts with 2.42 to go, trailing by four. We'll take a 30-second break. Lions looking to keep their season alive with a special drive upcoming on KLWN. Depend on it. People are creatures of habit. You know what I mean? You get up, you get dressed, you barely have time to eat. If you're lucky, you didn't walk out without your cell phone, but you did remember the dry cleaning. In today's busy world, we may or may not have coffee on the way out the door to school or work. Thank goodness for Scotch dry cleaners, because Linda knows just how to put that morning smile right on my face when Billy isn't behaving in the back seat. Scotch dry cleaners, they are more than just cleaners. They are family. Family owned and operated. 10 locations, Lawrence and Topeka. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320. KLWN, depend on it. 242 left, Dodge City 20, Lawrence High 16 on KLWN. With Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson. Lawrence is out of timeouts, but still enough time for them to try to engineer some magic here. Obviously, we saw the magic they engineered at the end of the Free State game. They're going to look for more of that. And just a couple weeks ago when they had a fourth and 10 at their own 40 with under a minute to go and it was Clint or uh, Banks Bowen hitting a 60 yard pass 
to Malcolm Paul to tie the game, and they eventually won an overtime. As Ojeda will kick it deep. This is going to be Galbraith off a hop. A couple of hits off his helmet. He doesn't know where the ball is. Finally picks it up at the 10. He's going to work up to the 15. Finds a hole at the 20. Uh, and here he goes to the 30. Galbraith hit from behind at the 40. Galbraith is on the green. And Josh he is Galbraith it. scores. <laughs> wow. What a run. The bobble was the key to that play. The bobble was the key to the play. It brought the defenders down far enough that they were overextended themselves and Galbraith able to get around a couple of those defenders, get through, <laughs> take the sideline and just put turn on the guns and go. Josh Galbraith, the sophomore, the hero so far in this game if this score holds true. The well, PAT, a pretty important one for LaFort. Looks like somebody's not out on the field. He's got to hurry. LHS is out of timeouts, but the play clock has never started, so I think they're going to be okay. And again, some more late subs, but again, the play clock, for whatever reason, has not started. Now they do. And the PAT for LaFort. Bit of a low snap, he's able to get it away. Not a ton of distance, but through, and that's important to put him up three. So, man, back and forth, Josh Galbraith with the big kick return touchdown, 90 yards, a bobbled football that he took to the house, and the young sophomore puts Lawrence in front, 23-20, 2.27 to go. Wow, wow. I mean, I, I tell you, you haven't, haven't seen that all year long, <laughs> uh, a, a kickoff return for TD. And uh, you, you knew because it, it happened at some point in time, but Galbraith, after the bobble, you don't expect it to happen, but that's exactly what needed to happen to make that play work for Josh, and he sure did. Uh, found the holes, uh, found the, the sight lines, and was able to figure it out and get up the field for the TD. The Lions go ahead. But two minutes, 27 seconds is not a lot of time, as we saw in that Free State game. Two, uh, two minutes, 20 to go, or two minutes, 12. And we got three, uh, two touchdowns. And, and a I mean, the way this is going, we might have a couple more scores. Who knows? 23-20. Three-point lead for LHS. They'll kick off. Dodge has one timeout remaining. And obviously the thing here for Lawrence High, make sure you avoid happening to you what just happened to the other sideline. Absolutely right. Got to have good coverage. Got to make put the ball in the right spot and look for a squib kick here. I do. Before well, no, does not. kick it up high. It's going to be fielded by Okoro at about the 15. He heads into the 20. He's wow! Ball out. does come out. They're going to say he was down though. Wow! Xander Thomas was down there quickly to make that stop and and what looked like that ball was up in the air and up for grabs, but uh, they call him down. Not great field position for Dodge City. They're at their own 18. Nope, 82 yards to go. Now they have hit some big pass plays, and they've had a couple others that they nearly hit with Amoro and Okoro. So I don't know if you're Lawrence Hyde. You just double cover both receivers and say let anybody else beat us. But we'll see what they uh, come out to do. We've seen them throw a lot of pressure and blitzes as this game has gone on. They've gotten some big hits on Flores. Sometimes it's caused some underthrows. Other times he's still been able to deliver. First and 10 for Dodge City. Winner moves on to play Derby next week on the road and keeps their season alive. The man goes in motion with Bone. Flores dropping back, unloads it deep downfield, looking for Amaro, and he's oh tackled my. over too early by Makai Hernandez. I don't think he needed to do that. He was in good coverage, no, and there was double coverage too. But it'll be pass interference. And, and, and it was way overthrown. I mean, there were a lot of things that, that happened, and Clint's hot, and he's letting him know about it. But you're right, he, he, it, it, it didn't need to happen. It is in college just a 15-yard penalty. It's not spot of the foul like the NFL, so that's the good news there for Lawrence. High school, excuse me, not college. But uh, still unlike the NFL there, so 15-yard penalty up to the 33. And from the left hash is the Dodge City offense with Flores. Bone goes over to the left side of the formation, trips to the right for the Demons. Flores going to scramble out right, throw to the sideline, and it's too high and overthrown for Romaro. Caught by Adam Green there on the sideline. Todd Leeper Williams, favorite play, play, <laughs> LHS player of all time. Well, 2.09 to go. 
Dodge has one timeout. Lawrence has only given up more than 24 points twice all year. And that's what Dodge City would need. Try to win this game at this point. Flores will drop back out of the gun. Delayed blitz for a fourth man, and he'll just take off running up the left. He'll get up to the 40 and get knocked out. Just shy of the first down sticks, but it does stop the clock. At the 40-yard line, it'll be third down. Two minutes, two seconds left to go in this game. Lions lead by three. What has been a uh, defensive battle, we've seen two scores within, a, within uh, uh, about 10 seconds of each other. As Lawrence High ran one back after the uh, Dodge City had gone ahead, Lawrence an answers on a, a run back from the kickoff. Empty set for Flores, drops back. There's an untimed blitz, and he throws a screen. It's going to be incomplete. Fourth down and three, and this is the game. Yeah, Galbraith in, uh, back there, as well as uh, Larney Finney back in the backfield. He had all kinds of pressure and, and nowhere to go with it. Minute 57 to go, fourth and three for Dodge City from their own 40-yard line. They've got to get to their own 43. And they, they do have one timeout. They've done it twice before. Let's see what they can do here. Flores has two receivers right, two to the left, and one running back in the shotgun set. They'll send a man in motion. It'll be a snap to Flores. Pressure through the middle. He gets hit, throws downfield, overthrown, incomplete. No flags. No flags on the field. Lions are going to take over, and Lions are going to win this game. They tried to get it to Amaro through the middle of the defense. Now most likely they can bring the clock down. There, there could be maybe a couple seconds left. Just gonna depend how long the plays last. They do have the one timeout. So that just depends how long all three of the plays go. Yeah, and the, the Dodge City coach is obviously very upset. Nobody hates losing in the playoffs. That's the and they but played so well. They had so many chances to pull this upset. Lawrence High might just survive. Obviously, if LHS does hold out onto this one, they're going to have to play much better next week. And they are going to go for a play. So first and 10 out of the pistol. The give will be to Jacobson up the middle, holding the ball tight with two hands. He's driven down after a gain of two. Obviously, Jacobson fumbled earlier. That's, you know, lesson number one here. Hold on to the ball in this moment. This clock can be driven down to about a minute 01, minute 02 before they snap it. It's second down and eight. And obviously still the one timeout left for Dodge City. Owen looking to the sideline. They're waiting to bleed some more clock before they get the playoff. Yep, let's, let's just have, have a good head on your shoulders here, Banks. Just wait till it gets underneath five and then go ahead and take that snap. Second down and eight from the 38 yard line. Down to seven on the play clock. A bone will snap with five. Could have taken a few more seconds. Jacobson, though, trips up, and it's not wow. going to matter. He's got the first down, and that will do it. The nail in the coffin. Jacobson, the first down run, and the Lions are going to win this thing. 23-20, and with just a minute to go, Dodge just the one timeout that they're going to use right now, but it's kind of just a moot point because... LHS can kneel the ball twice without them stopping it, and that'll exhaust the clock. They found a way to get it done. It wasn't always pretty today, but they forced three turnovers. They have the kick return touchdown. All that matters at this time of year, did you get the win? Did you keep your season going? Did you survive? Did you advance? And the answer to all those after tonight will be yes. It's exactly just, just what we needed. I mean, got exactly what we needed. It, it, it doesn't feel great uh, because you, you were kind of maybe expecting to win by a little bit more, score some uh, a score easier than we did. Did not expect all the turnovers that we got. Uh, but really, it is a thanks to the turnovers by the defense that we're able to win this game. First and 10 from the 29. Dodge City now out of timeouts. Bowen will take a kneel down out of the pistol. And he'll have to do that just one more time. About a 13 second difference between game and play clock. As the uh, clock.
clock, as soon as it gets under 40, he can uh, snap that ball. Oh, no, they'll have to wait. Well, yeah, as soon as it's under 40, they'll be, they'll be fine to go ahead and snap it again and take it, and then that'll be the game. Well, Clint Bowens won his first round playoff game, and now all three of his seasons as the head coach at Lawrence High. Takes the final kneel down. Lawrence 23, Dodge City 20. Lions come out on top. Josh Galbraith, the game-winning kick return from 90 yards with two and a half minutes to go. And the Lions move to seven and two. Their season stays alive. And guess who next week? Old familiar Derby. How many times have we lost to Derby in the final <laughs> game of the year? We need to look at that because uh, it's happened far too many times. Us and Free State. Well, last Both year, local teams have, uh, yeah. yeah. And last year, Derby won 76 to 28 in the second round. I mean, it's just, it, it's unreal what Year Derby one of Bowen was when they lost in the sub state finals to Derby. It's, it's happened a lot, but that's a problem for next week. And certainly, maybe you get to, uh, I don't know, be a little bit under the radar after this performance. Maybe Derby overlooks things a little bit, but again, that'll be for next Friday. LHS 23, Dodge City 20. We're going to take a timeout, then get to our post-game wrap-up brought to you by Mama's Tamale Shop. Authentically made empanadas, street tacos, tamales, and more. Try the fresh waters, the house-made salsas with Mama's Tamale Shop. They're open early tomorrow before the KU game, too. You can get some breakfast tacos out there. And uh, come by High School Sports Weekly this upcoming Thursday at Mama's Tamale Shop from 6 to 7. All right, quick timeout, then back for a post-game report on KLWN. Depend on it. The Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry in Lawrence welcomes Dr. Essen Nickball. Hi, I'm Essen Nickball. I'm a general dentist, and I joined a few months back. And I'm very excited to see new people and meet new people in Lawrence, Kansas. My favorite thing to do in dentistry is root canals and crowns. That's what I love to do all day, every day. Second best is extract bad teeth and replace them with implants. The Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry. Kind, caring, and understanding when you need it most. Online at kansascenterforsedationdentistry.com. And just like that, it all comes down to this. Fourth and goal. Matt, take yourself inside the huddle. What play are you calling? I'm saying, let's go to 23rd Street Brewery. Right now? Yeah. It's the biggest play of the game. No better time than that. There's no better spot to watch football than 23rd Street Brewery. We've got the Lions, the Firebirds, of course the Jayhawks, and all the NFL action. Well, we better get out of here fast to catch the ending of the game. Dibs on the Haney Turkey Stack. That's the 23rd Street Brewery, corner of Clinton Parkway and Castle. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320. KLWN. Depend on it. Lawrence wins 23-20 over Dodge City. Improved to 7-2. and two. They'll move to the second round of the 6A Acacia playoffs, and they'll face Derby on the road next Friday. Free State also won today. They'll take on Manhattan next Friday. I guess if both Lawrence and Free State win, they'd uh, be meeting in the next round, so... Who knows what can happen? Uh, with Matt Llewellyn, I'm Derek Johnson on KLWN. Thanks for joining us on tonight's action. What a game. 23-20. Lions win it. Dodge City went down, got the first touchdown of the game, passing the ball down the field to go up 7-0. Then there was a fumble recovered on a punt by Hayden Reese. 26-yard rushing touchdown by Banks Bowen, tied it at 7. Uh, the Lions got a fumble from Xander Thomas, then went down, got a field goal. It was 10-7. Dodge City scored toward the end of the first half to go up 13-10. And then in the second half, it was back and forth. Dodge got stopped at the one yard line at one point. LHS got a touchdown to go up 16-13, missed PAT. Dodge City scored to go up 20-16 with a couple minutes left. And then Josh Galbraith, the 90 yard kick return after fumbling the return, kind of muffing it or uh, having trouble picking it up, I guess, on a weird bounce and took it to the house. And then LHS making the stop, they win 23-20. to So uh, Matt, biggest takeaway from today's game. They've got a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, uh, you don't expect certainly a game tonight where they're thinking, okay, we're going to get past these guys and bring on Derby. I mean, you, you, you can't help to think that for high school kids. I mean, that's what they're thinking. And, uh, and Dodge City came to play, and they gave us a hard-fought game. And without the play of, uh, of our defense, we, we would be our, – our playoff road would be done. But our defense came up strong on multiple occasions, and, uh, and, and that's the difference of the game, and that's why Lawrence High won this game. Uh, and, and I would, you know, there's no one really that you can point to on the offensive side of the ball that, of, of why 
we had problems. We just we were just un, unproductive. A few small bounces, a few you know contested catches that weren't just flat out drops. They had some plays where maybe if you ask the Lawrence High receivers, they should say, well, or they would say, I should have held on to it, but the guy made a good play on it. Just, I don't know, little things where they were just slightly off, it right. felt like, yeah. But time of possession, I mean, you know, we don't sure. keep, keep that re- that here, but time of possession had to be in huge yes. Dodge City's favor. Yes. And that's got to change. I mean, because that just hurts our defense. You know, they're high school kids, they're resilient. Maybe they like that. <laughs> maybe they, they, our defense, the way they played tonight, maybe they enjoyed being out on the field and, and, and like, like to face that adversity but my goodness uh it it, it we've got to we've got to fix some things or we're, we're going to be in real hurt next week because right. dodge city is not you know they might this score might make them underestimate us but uh and and have a little high school itis but they usually they usually don't not dodge city so or not uh not derby so we're gonna have to fix some things and if, if it's going to work out uh, in the win column next week. So, but as always, we'll be there covering it and uh, do whatever we can to uh, cheer on these Chessy Lions. Offensive and defensive player of the game for the Lions. You know, offense. You got to say Banks Bowen. He is the leader out there. Uh, you know, probably not his most productive night, but he did make some plays when you he needed Gabe to. Gabe Wingard as well had the big touchdown. G- Gabe Wingard had the touchdown, but so did Banks. And Banks. Yep. You know, Banks was able to make big runs when he needed to, and and Banks was <laughs> Banks connected to Gabe Weir, so uh, I, I I'd give it to the quarterback because the quarterback the quarterback did, did make the plays when he needed to. Uh, Xander Thomas, uh, Josh Galbraith. Uh, how about Josh Galbraith? Not granted, it was a. I was going to give him special teams. A special teams. Yep. Okay, you mm-hmm. there we go. Josh Galbraith going to get. He did have a sack teams. and a half though he, too. He had, so I mean, he, he's he just the overall his, player of the game. Played his. And maybe so. And maybe then you give it to Xander as defensive player. Uh, Xander, again, a whale of a night. Uh, and, and, it just, and and really, the defensive line, I mean, just. I thought Larney Finney played very well. Larney too. Finney. Yep. Hey, you know what? We don't call Larney a lot. And um, you're absolutely right. He did. And he was in the, their backfield quite a, quite a bit. So, you know, I, that's why I say. I would call the player of the game the whole defensive unit because if it wasn't for the defense, we wouldn't be here. All right, he's Matt Llewellyn. You can hear him on the call next Friday with the Derby game and Lawrence High right here on KLWN. That'll do it for us tonight. Free State victorious over on 92 on the bowl. LHS wins 23-20. They move to the second round of the playoffs. I'm Derek Johnson. Have a great rest of your night. And uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow to KU Football at 11, Crimson Blue Show 9.30. And uh, we'll be out at Big Mill from 8.30 to 10.30 with the KISS crew. Live show 8.30 to 9.30 leading up to the game. See you later. Your quarterback getting sacked is about as disruptive as flooding, fire damage, or mold-infested walls to your home or business. Get up off the turf and go for the end zone with Rainbow Restoration, locally owned with over 20 years of experience. They can help you with any water, fire, and mold cleanup with their IICRC certified technicians, free assessments, and local experts to help you from start to finish. Call Rainbow Restoration to solve your home disaster at 785-371-2400 and get your phone call answered by a real human instead of an answering service. It's nerve-wracking when your child starts driving. After all, you always hear about those high accident numbers for teens. You want to put your focus into making sure your child is safe and okay. And the last thing you want to deal with is a pesky insurance claim. The Law Office of Sally Kelsey and Lawrence will put you at ease. Sally Kelsey offers free consultations and has helped people with accidents for over 30 years. Let her help you navigate your claim and seek a fair settlement. That's Sally Kelsey, K-E-L-S-E-Y. Sigler Pharmacy strives to make each customer's pharmacy experience as smooth and simple as possible. Sigler believes that being a local pharmacy means providing health care services to its patients that are customized to meet their needs. Sigler can help manage medication refills for hypothyroidism, high blood pressure, diabetes, and more. They will even pre-pack your monthly med box and deliver it straight to your door. Let their knowledgeable pharmacist at Sigler Pharmacy help manage your medications and questions. Sigler Pharmacy cares. Call today. 
Trinity Credit Union is a proud supporter of the Lawrence High Lions and all Lawrence Public Schools. We've donated over $61,000 to support our schools and teachers. Get your Chesty Lions Spirit Debit Card today. Each purchase you make with the card raises money for our schools. You swipe, we give. Visit a branch today or online at truitycu.org slash spirit card to learn more. Stand up and cheer for your Lawrence Lions with Truity. Truity Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. For the Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry, here is Dr. Heck. I'm just really excited about what's going on at the Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry. I am overseeing everything and helping with the IV sedation. We're doing almost everything now in-house, meaning we're using digital process, 3D scanners and 3D printers. It gives us lots of advantages to make sure that we come out with the best outcome for the patients. The Kansas Center for Sedation Dentistry. Kind, caring, and understanding when you need it most. Online at kansascenterforsedationdentistry.com. There are a lot of Mexican restaurants that claim to be authentic or think their food tastes that way, but nothing compares to Mama's Tamale Shop. Enjoy artistically prepared tamales, empanadas, and street tacos with your choice of meats and salsas that are prepared fresh to order. Not sure what to order? Mama's will always give you a sample. Relax and enjoy great food and try one of the fresh waters or jaritos on the patio. Authentic Mexican food. Come hungry, leave satisfied. Mama's Tamale Shop, 9th in Louisiana. Kurt Geeser State Farm Agency understands the importance of being a member in the Lawrence community and supporting local. They also understand the importance of supporting you and Lawrence, whether it's through the peace of mind you get with insurance or helping you with any financial questions or needs. Just like this high school broadcast, Kurt Geeser State Farm Agency will tackle any issues you need covered. Give Kurt and his team a call at 785-843-0003 or visit them online at www.kurtinsures.com. Your home for the Jayhawks, Lions, and Firebirds is FM 1017 and 1320 KLWN. Depend on it. 